All right. So, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about um, uh, your work, your body of work, both, you know, for what people know you uh, or, or some of the more famous, uh, more popular things, but also mm -hmm. um, everything that has just gone on in your career. Mm -hmm. So please feel free to share um, anything that you like, you know, okay. like, just well, feel comfortable to say what you want. I mean, it all started, it all started for me, you know, being in the group main mm -hmm. source, like main source is basically large pro K cut and sir scratch. Right. And that's what makes us, but individually we're all producers with different ideas. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. In terms of my background, it's Jamaican and Guyanese. So in my household, it was a lot of reggae, soca, you know what I mean? So I grew up on that stuff. And then my mom had like soul records and stuff like that. So for me, it was like a vast amount of um, music that was just playing all the time, every Saturday and everything like that. So that, that kind of like, you know, made me want to, you know, get into music, you know? And on top of that, my grandfather was a musician. Like he used to put out like, disco records back in in the 70s and stuff like that you know what mm -hmm. i mean so that that's you know he was another inspiration in terms of you know making music so um you know in a nutshell like you know being in this group and and doing what we did for main source you know and large pro doing his solo production you know i wanted to start my own thing so um the first record i've ever recorded and ever produced was um maestro fresh west you know, and I did, I did, um, I came back out here when I was living in New York just to produce uh, his, his album called Conducting Things. Mm -hmm. So from that record, you know, I, I started doing other work back in New York City. So I worked with Queen Latifah, did production on her album. And from there, it, it just trickled. So it, from Latifah, it, I did the Fushnikins. And from the Fushnikins, it, it trickled to like, um, what Ice T, um, Big Pun, um, friggin', um, gosh, it's like so much stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, so I know. It's just, it's, it, it's just, it's just, you know, trying to get the music out there so people can hear what K Cut can do. You know, mm -hmm. other than being in a group that you know people are like, oh, large pro, large pro. You know what I mean? I wanted to share my music and share my my vision to the world. You know what I mean? And 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 let people know, yeah, th th this group is a group that that it's a, it's a producer. It's a producer base. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we all have you know production skills, and that's what created you know Breaking Atoms. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. you know three guys that had a vision, and and that all can make music. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean there's so much you know that i've done like it's just a lot i even dabbled in r&b i worked with a, a group called 702 on on motown and i did a song called get down like that with uh missy elliott you know what mm -hmm. i mean and my, and my cousin rashad smith who also is a producer you mm -hmm. know what i mean so it, it's like the whole family ties is like crazy so you know we we just yeah. get down and we just work <laughs> man and, and i mean your mom your own mother was a big reason for pushing out your your first album right she yes. kind of made it all happen yes it's funny because you know my mom was the heart of everything because my bro mm -hmm. myself and my brother like you know we said hey listen mom we have an idea and you know this is what we want to do and this is real shit though because we were never like the, the school kids you know what I mean we're always like the creative kids and you know I used to cut school and everything like that so my mom was like listen you know what you could do what you want, but you got to finish school first. So mm -hmm. it was just like, all right, this was the opportunity, you know, to do it. And she said that she would invest in it. So it was just like, ah, this is a perfect opportunity. If you say you're going to put money to it, then great. Let's just finish this off and then mm -hmm. get to it. So we basically finished off school. And um, I had a friend in high school that was a friend of large, um, large professor. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that connected me to Large Professor. And when mm -hmm. I when I when I when I hooked up with Large, I was just like his name wasn't Large Professor back then. It was yeah. Paul Juice. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. So uh it, it, it changed. It changed when, <laughs> when, when the When you put out the album, did the, did the name change? No, no. It 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 changed when we actually did our first demo. 
You know oh, what I mean? Okay. So our first demo was, um, it's, it's crazy. You're going to get the history today. So um, Perfect. basically the, 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 the group, all right. So large came to the crib. I was like, mom, this is, you know, Paul. And, um, and at, at that time too, when, when large pro came, Neek the exotic was supposed to be in the group as well. Mm-hmm. So Neek the exotic was the, the MC that was on faking the funk. So, he was supposed to be in the group as well. You know, I'm not throwing any shade, but he didn't want to get down. And then, you know, later on, you know, we did faking the funk, right? Because he saw like, oh shit, the group, you know, the group was doing what they were supposed to do. Doing. Mm-hmm. He's, that's my man to this day. He's good to go. You know what I mean? But that's basically, you know, you know, a short story on, you know, how Neek wasn't in the group, but he was one of the original members, you know, of main source. Oh. You know oh, what okay. I mean? Okay. But um, yeah, so anyhow, Getting back to um, you know doing this the whole main source thing, we 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 actually went into the studio and did cut demos and demos and you know went to record companies and they were like mm, no we're not really feeling you you know so we had one record deal that we got that the label was actually interested in in us and this was Zakia Records mm-hmm. and if anybody knows Zakia Records Zakia Records is is the label that put out Eric B and Rakim, mm-hmm. Eric B is president. Mm-hmm. So we got the deal. We were like, oh shit, this is great. We finally got a deal. So we get this deal and we're excited. We go up to get the check, the record company folded. Damn. So that ended our dream right there. So we're like, what the hell? So we got so close that it was just like, oh my gosh. So, you know, my mom said, you know what? Don't worry. We'll go back in and we'll put out the records ourselves. So then we came up with the name Actual. And from Actual Records, that's when we produced um, Think and Adam. And then from there, we did Watch Roger Do His Thing and Large Professor, and we started charting. So when we started charting, a lot of the labels were like watching us and seeing what we were doing. And then um, it, it was just like, we had a thing where we had a couple of labels, but we wanted we wanted to go with the independent because we felt that the independent would be a better a better fit for for us at the time, right? Because there was um, Wild Pitch had like Chill Rob G, they had Lord Finesse, and they had um, Gangstar at the time. Mm-hmm. So once we so we said, you know what, let's go with that label because they had like a powerful like roster, you know what I mean? So we said, mm-hmm. okay, cool, we'll rock with them. So we did and gangstar left the label you know what i mean so we're like all right cool you know everybody else is still here so they basically threw us in the studio and you know we just did what we had to do and come up with the album and you know there you go it was you know breaking Mm -hmm. atoms you know what i mean but the thing about doing that album i I tell everybody because people ask me they're like how did you do you know how did Live at the barbecue come up, and I and I told and I tell everybody the, the story with Live at the barbecue was a it was the last song, right? Right. right for the for the for the album, because the the owner of the label was like, no, you guys need another song. So we we're like, what are we gonna do? Like, so we just went back in, and Nas is there at the time. You know what I mean? Like he was around Large Pro because that was Large Pro's artist. Like he was working on him and stuff like that. So mm. it was just like, all right. We have Joe Fatal, we have Akinelli, those are like the homies and, and not. So we're just like, all right, cool. We gotta do this last song. So it's gonna it's gonna be this. We don't know how it's gonna turn out, but it's gonna be this. Boom. Mm. That's how large um um Live at the Barbecue became. That's dope. So do you know why the label said you needed another track? They thought the album was pretty short. You know what I mean? Because at that okay. time we were doing we were doing songs that were like two minutes and 40 minutes, two minutes and 40 seconds and stuff like that. Cause we felt like, nah, man, let's just keep these songs short. And, you know, we don't, you know, we just need to just introduce and get the hell out. You know what I mean? And that was our, our vibe at that time. Mm-hmm. But the label, the label owner was like, no, you guys need to add like, like a bridge, you know what I mean? Like a breakdown in the songs and stuff. So that's how we became like, when we started making music, and producing, we started putting like breaks and different tri- kind of intricate shit in the music because Stu Fine was like, yo, you guys need to add that. That would give it like some type of, you know, kind of like, you know, 
musical break you know what i mean with all the shit that you're doing in within the music you know what i mean mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know that's that's how a lot of people i think started doing like musical breaks and breakdowns and stuff like that because mm -hmm. we actually started that first right so yeah you did yeah you, you know so that's you know that's his story he wanted us to get back in there because he felt the the album was a little too short and we needed one more song so that that was the thing we said okay cool we're gonna bring these guys and we're gonna do this and you know we didn't we didn't even feel that it was going to be like a huge successful song you know what i mean like mm -hmm. we thought a lot of other songs in the album was pretty good but you know it was one of those songs where it was like all right cool <laughs> like we'll see we'll see what what happens and you know mm -hmm. what it works out to be so it happened to be one of the huge songs that created a lot of success for you know um Nas and Akinelli and you know what I mean so mm -hmm. it, it, it was a good look it was a good look it was a good look I'm, I'm glad we did it you know what I mean so yeah yeah, I yeah. Bet. how did Akinelli get on that track um these are all friends of ours okay you know what I mean from from the area because I grew up in Queens so everybody's mm -hmm. everybody was from Queens right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's it was like a, a Queens thing like oh yo get Ak Ak is like right up the block or, you know what I mean? Large was working with uh, um, Nas and and Joe Fatal was like, you know, a part of the crew. So it was just like, all right, this is, it makes sense. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So that's why we got, you know, our guys in there because it made sense. And they were, they were our, our boys, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what it was, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I want to ask you to kind of paint the picture of, where you were when you were a teenager and listening to hip hop in in Queens, like were you listening to the radio a whole lot? What mm -hmm. what DJs were you watching? Like what was kind of uh, propelling you into hip hop? And where were you looking for like inspiration? And, and okay, yeah, New York, New York at the time, like in Queens, because I forgot to tell you, like I, I'm I'm a born Canadian. I was I was born in Canada, mm -hmm. and we migrated to you know New York when I was like four or five years old yeah. so that's yeah. how the whole new york thing came about where people are like oh they're from canada we were born in canada but we grew up in new york so yeah. we, grew up, we grew up in the mecca of what the hell was going on you know that's, what i'm saying so that's right that's right yeah so it was a crazy time so um grew up there in new york so basically in new york in the 80s rappers delight and i'm pretty sure you hear this story from a lot of other people but that was the song. Rapper's mm -hmm. Delight brought life to hip hop. You know what I mean? And, and at the time it was, you know, we had like Red Alert, Chuck Chill Out, and Awesome Too. And there were so many other like underground DJs in New York that were playing, you know, hip hop and stuff like that. So um, basically that's where it started from listening to Rapper's Delight and, and wanting to be a part of what, the hell was going on because this was like the biggest record in the world so mm. every kid at that time probably my age you know what i mean were were like yo break dancing you know what i mean so there was it was like a, a cultural movement you know what i mean with break dancing and hip-hop so you know any kid that's growing up in that like at the time you know you want to be a part of that and and mm. i think that's what you know pretty much like you know, brought like the attention and brought, you know, the whole wanting to be in a hip hop group alive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's what it was. That's, that's, you know, what it was about. And, you know, that's, that's how, you know, things sprung along, you know what I mean? Because of the music and the culture that time, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and you were the one who wanted to form a group. Yeah. With your brother. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you did a little bit of scouting that's what it was yeah. yeah yeah it was it was a scouting we you know um the first group that myself and my brother did was called new crew new crew and, yeah new crew all right <laughs> it was a name it was i, a I name. never heard anybody else with it <laughs> yeah so i mean it worked it worked for it worked for that time but um uh we felt that the mc that we had wasn't strong enough for what we wanted right in mm. a group and at that time, it was just like, you got to come with a, a dope ass MC. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And this guy, his name was Easy Earl. 
and he was actually really <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> he was actually okay. related to uh <laughs> he was actually related to um one of the dudes in grandmaster flash and those the, that that group so mm. um i don't know how we met him but he came through and you know the the rhymes are like mediocre or whatever it wasn't really what we wanted so it was just like okay cool this guy's not gonna work you know what i mean mm -hmm. so boom years went on later and i was hanging out with a friend of mine named J um van and van was best friends with large pro mm -hmm. so i was like van I want to put a group together, me and my brother. And, you know, I'm scouting for MCs and stuff like that. And he was like, yo, I got a dude. And I'm like, you don't understand. Everybody says they got a dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm like, everybody's rapping. Yeah, everybody's rapping at that time. Everybody wants to be an MC and rock Kim and all this shit. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let me meet this dude. So I met him and it was, it was kind of funny because he was wearing like polo and like, you know, um, dribbles and all that shit. And I'm like, yo, that's like my flavor. Like, that's how I dress. Like, you know, so that's kind of like where we got like acquainted. And it was like, we were like, really like, we, we kind of like had the same kind of vibes. You know what I mean? So it was just like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. That's when I said, yo, you got to come and meet my mom and my brother. So that's when he came and he brought Neek with him and, and everything like that. So mm -hmm. when Neek, like I said, when Neek, left it was just like all right cool Nick, Nick wanted to just venture out and do his thing so it was like all right cool large let's go you know what I mean Paul Juice at the time you know what I mean let's go let's let's find a studio mm. friends of mine you know and this is it's it's crazy because this whole story you know introduces how we met Paul C the late great Paul C the engineer mm -hmm. right and um friends of mine had um had did a demo with Paul C at 1212 okay. Studios. So they were like, yo, okay, this is what we, what we came up with. There's this engineer, this white dude, that's fucking incredible. And his name is Paul C. And he's like, just a monster with programming and doing beats and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, give me his, um, his number at the studio and I'll contact, you know, and see if we could book some studio time and, and go in there and see if he could, you know, do that same magic he did for y'all for us. So they gave me the number, send it to my mom. My mom set up the studio time with the uh, studio owner. That's how the whole Paul C thing came about. That's how we, we met Paul C. So Large never knew Paul C. It was friends of mine that, that connected me to 1212 Studio. And without them, you know, connecting me, I don't even know where the legacy would go so everything was just you see where the stars are aligning right the stars mm -hmm. are aligning to where we needed to to go and basically paul c was you know a big brother to all of us because the way he produced you know we basically when he passed away we basically took his programming and his 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 whole vision and basically created what we have to the to this day you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know so we we inherited his vibes you know what i mean and we mm -hmm. did it our way you know what i mean so that's what came up with that's how we came up with the sound and how we were able to do what we were able to do you know what i mean so paul c basically co-produced thinking adam you know what i mean the first singles and then we went along and then we did, you know, watch Roger do his thing and large professor, you know, when he passed away, it was, it was crazy because we were like, what the fuck are we going to do? We, ha we just got this guy and he's so incredible and he's helping us mold our sound. And now mm -hmm. he's gone. Like, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was just like, <laughs> it was one of those things where it's just like, now we got to fend for ourselves. So we had a concept and we knew what we wanted to do. So it was just about getting in the studio and putting it down on real to real and pretty much that's what we did so we um we just we just did what we had to do we we found another studio called libra digital sounds in queens and we put it down you know what mm -hmm. i mean so that's yeah wow uh, yeah it's crazy it's crazy like like yeah. some people say i should yo you should be writing a book maybe one day maybe it might be a story maybe it might be a movie we never know but you yeah know. yeah <laughs> Yeah, man, but you know what's coming. Yeah, it's, <laughs> there's so many pieces in the puzzle, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, it was just like, 
at that time, like the stars were aligning for us the right way. So it was, you know, I'm, I'm thankful and I'm blessed that it, it has because, you know, we, we put our contribution and our works in, in this game in the music. So, you know what I mean? That's what I mean, it is. Yeah. And that's kind of the second time it seemed that, you know, that you had a bit of a shortstop or something because first you had to deal with your label disappearing mm-hmm. from under your feet and then yeah. your engineer also losing your yeah. engineer right at the beginning yeah, that you really get yeah into it. which which was crazy so it was you were just young like a lo- you know yeah. a bunch of young uh, young kids doing that you were what like 19 couldn't have been older no than i i was probably I, no i was probably like 17 wow 18. yeah 17 18 yeah yeah we started wow. we we started to um music like when we're like 16 like you Mm. know what i mean like you Mm. know from the first group you know what i mean and then transcending to you know putting the whole main source thing together so Mm -hmm. you know that's that's pretty much yeah i was i was really young and and it was it was crazy because it's just like i mean you don't know what what's going to happen or where you're going to go we could have been like any other you know person trying to make a record and you know what i mean and nothing but like mm-hmm. i said it's all about things aligning and making sense and 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 just doing it you know what i mean mm-hmm. and and you know if you have a dream and if you feel solid about what you want to do then it could happen you could do anything you want to do in this world you know what i mean if you put your mind to it you know mm-hmm. what i mean so mm-hmm. that's that's how i feel in life you know what i mean yeah and that's um that's one of the things about hip hop man like mm-hmm. You know, I'm a big, I think my, my favorite sound is, is like the, the sonic character of 90s hip hop, you know, for the most part. That's, that's kind of like my favorite, my go-to. So, you know, Breaking Adams, I, I love that album. Thank you. Thank um, you. No doubt. And I mean, that's the crazy thing when you think about it, though, because so many of these seminal hip hop albums and records and just artists who really paved the way and made made records that have actually you know aged extremely well such as Uh breaking uh atoms that album has aged very well like thank you you know at at the same time um you know people say that this 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 record totally created the the way that people were sampling following you know 1991 that's Honestly, it's crazy, it's a, right? Yeah, it, it, it's a crazy, it's an honor. And I'm, you know, sometimes I, I look back and I'm like, we put in all this work and I just want people to recognize that we were, you know, basically one of the, uh, like a foundation in that golden era. You know what I mean? With, yes. along with our comrades, like Tribe and Jungle and yes. my people and all, and all of that. Sometimes I think people forget it, but then again, you know, when I travel and, and, and you know, and I do performances with large, it's just like, fuck, people do remember, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's, it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm glad that people, you know, get it. And then, you know, not too long ago, we did a, a re-release of the album and the re-release was just to, you know, spark the interest of younger people that didn't get, you know, that, that didn't know anything about main source, but now they know. So I got, I got like a, a lot of younger people, like, you know, like, yo, this record is crazy. This is hip hop. Like, you know what I mean? So, Mm -hmm. you know, it feels good too. Like, you know, that, Mm -hmm. that we got the younger generations, you know, feeling like, you know, this whole thing, but the album is basically like, like a journey, you know, and experiences that, you know, we all as young people, you know, at that time had like, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So, you know, whether it's peace is not the word to play or, you know, um, looking at the front door relationship issues or whatever, or just a friendly game of baseball, you know, and, oh boy, and yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Experiencing things like that, you know, at that time. And then you have that shit happening right now. It's crazy. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know what I mean? So, I mean, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no worries. No worries. Um, yeah. Okay, let me turn off this light because it's blinding me. Just Okay, cool. No worries. No worries. <laughs> Trying to look cute, but it's not working. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, 
Yeah, on, on that piece, though, I mean, so this is the other thing about uh, Breaking Atoms, is that you guys, sonically, lyrically, you know, and also the way that the album is just put together, you sound uh, ahead of your age. At the same time, sonically, you sound ahead of, ahead of the time, which I think unanimously you, you people agree that you were. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you still retain that youthful um, ethos that you guys were. And you guys were like 16, 17, 18 years old, like you just yeah. said. Yeah. Um, and and like, this is what I was saying earlier, that this is what's so incredible about hip hop, because you have all of these... Um, you know, legacy artists who created some of not only their their own best work, but just some of hip hop's best products. Right. And they were like teenagers. Right. Right. You know. I think. I, I, you know what it is. I. I. I don't know. It's the energy. Like you know what I mean. Like mm. even when you think about like a lot of the music that's happening right now, like all the trap stuff. It's the energy. It's like what's happening around you you know what i mean that gives you that yo i need to do that you know what i mean or mm-hmm. i need to express this you know what i'm saying it's just like everything is like full circle like you know what i mean you still have the boom bap you know what i mean it's not as prominent as trap but it you still have like yo i need to hear like you know like some mm-hmm. common or you know what i mean like you know what i mean so you still get that but but at the same time too it's just like it's like everything that happens, like with, with, put it this way, like with soul records, right? James Brown, you know, you, you just rediscover things and you put it in interpretation how you want to, yeah. you know what I mean? To, yeah. How you want to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and I think that's how, you know, music is, you know what I mean? Like it, it's full circle because whatever happened back then, you know, people still flip, like even in trap music, they flip like certain samples or whatever, you know, like for instance, Murder Beats did uh, flip the, uh, the Lauren Hill joint, right? For, mm. for Drake, right? So mm. it's interpreted a certain way, but mm. it's up to today's standard. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it, it's like I said, music is just full circle and it's just the energy that people feed off of. You know what I mean? So what we felt back then was like, soul records you know what i mean i could go on my collection and say okay boom i, I love this you know meters record like i, I gotta flip it but mm. i'm gonna flip it the way i hear it hear how it should go you know mm. what i mean and that's what creates you know your sound for that time you know what i mean yeah so that's how that's how it, that's how it is a music is inspiration you know what i mean it, it's it's just vibes you know what i mean and and you know that's why music will always be around you know what i mean from the the from African drums to, you know, um, you know, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just oh, like, yeah. Yeah. it's just something that would just always be around because people always want to be around something that feels good. And music mm-hmm. does make people feel good. You know what I mean? Whether Absolutely. it's, you know, slow, fast, hard, rock, whatever. It's just a world generation of music that's just like inspirational. You know what I mean? So, yeah, 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 yeah. it's crazy. You know, (laughs) I listen to music every single day, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's just like, and for me, it's just like, I DJ as well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, when I DJ, I was DJing at this place called Cold Tea, you know, in the the city. So that was like, you know, my my regular hangout spot because I was just like, you know, I'm just like always wanting to, you know, see, you know, the progression, the vibes. and, And I was taking what other people, you know, you know, feel and, and their energies, right? So for me, it was just like, you know, I would play trap music because I get it. You know what I mean? I would play mm. like a bit of like, you know, boss gags, you know what I mean? Like, mm. you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Or play mm-hmm. a little disco and throw all of that in the mix. And then oh, that's yeah. what, what makes your music like, okay, cool. Not only can he play this well, he can play this well too and play that well. Yeah. You know what I mean? And understand what he's playing. And that's, you know what I mean? That's being, you know, for me, being a DJ, you got to understand everything and understand well, not just say, okay, cool. You know, I was brought up in the 90s in the golden era and I'm going to throw in some trap because, you know, that's the cool shit. Mm. Understand what you're playing. And if if you understand and feel what you're playing, Mm. then your expression of how you play it will show 
to people. Mm -hmm. And that's how I was able to do a lot of DJ gigs because it was just like, oh, I fuck with this shit. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's not mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. old, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm from the golden era, but I don't fuck with this shit. Like, I fuck with this shit. Like, it's crazy, right? You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. some of the shit is, is horrible. You have some fucked up trap shit, but you know, you got some good trap shit too. So it's just like, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's, it is what it is and what you feel. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. all about, for me, it's energy, right? So the, if the energies is right, then, then there you go. You know what 100%. I mean? percent. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. I, I know what you mean. Like I DJ yeah. too. Mm -hmm. And the last, I know. I see, I see, I see. <laughs> I catch you. <deep. laughs> yeah, man. And so like, I don't know if you've seen the last few things that I've streamed on live, but it's mm -hmm. been like, even when I'm putting the sets together, I'm just like, man, I'm going all over the place with this. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. <laughs> you know? And that's okay. That's okay. It is, you know? Yeah. And, and it's been recently that I've started to become okay with that and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even actually embrace that some more mm -hmm. and also start going into different genres, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I ended up, I end up loving when I mm -hmm. listen to other mixes or when I discover new music, mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, you know, a year mm -hmm. ago, I would never have thought that I would have been into this, you know? Right. But, right. Right. Uh, but I tell you, like, it, it does come from the energy. Like it really, yeah. Yeah. You, you can't, um, even if you wanted to, like, you can't really, if, if you really love music and you really mm -hmm. feel it on kind of a, a deep level, which yeah. I think most music lovers do, yeah. even if you wanted to be within a box of just one genre or one era or one sound, yeah. you can't, you know? Yeah. It's funny because a lot of, you know, I want to say creative people, you know what I mean? I don't want to just say, okay, musicians or whatever, because we're all creative people mm -hmm. and that's you know your inspiration is from like you know good vibes good feelings and yeah. and you can't even if you wanted to pigeonhole yourself to one box you can't because there's so much good shit out there that you're exactly. like oh, how can i resist <laughs> that you know what i'm saying exactly so, exactly so that's what that's what makes people like you know even for me as being a record collector, like collecting like jazz, rock, like country, because there's so much good shit. You don't know what's on what until mm -hmm. you listen to it and feel it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's my take on things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when you know, when you notice what you're moved by or what feels like a cathartic experience, it's like, yes. oh, wow. You know, that opens yeah. a lot of doors. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. A lot of doors. Um, so, so I was curious, um, when I listened to Peace is Not the Word to Play, it, it made me yes. think just a little bit of, um, the five percenter influence in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, did any of that, sorry, did any of that go into the album or were you guys around any of that? Cause it's, it's not totally prevalent, but there are things that I, you know, hear, Kind of I think um, I think with large because I think one at one yeah. point like he was into it, you know what I mean. For me, it was like you know I was growing dread, so I was all about like Rastafari, uh -huh. all that, you know what I'm saying. So for 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 me, it was just like he had his you know five percent kind of vibe, and I had like my kind of like you know Rastafari and you know religion kind of thing, and that's the reason the the whole sole purpose reason that that I was growing dreads, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, like follow the religion and, and study that. But um, mm -hmm. because I love pork so much, I had to stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> you had to stop being I, I, a roster? Yeah, because- You definitely wouldn't be a five like, percenter. <laughs> no, not, 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 no. Nah. They would, they would, like, they would banish me probably. Because I mean, like being West Indian, like, you know, and having a West Indian, you know, background, like we eat, pork we eat like you know what i mean so it's just like do you really want to get rid of that and hell no mm. you know what I mean? so it's just like but but i still like you know take like like pieces and bits and 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 i practice like certain things and you know within within the religion though you know what i'm saying mm. so and 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 for me it's the the biggest thing is like you know of of all is probably respect and love you know what i mean mm -hmm. and and you know i i grew up like you know being like just a conscious and righteous person not to be in trouble or you know be you know just a bad person you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you know i think 
a lot of young people should, you know, I don't know. I don't want to be a preacher and I'm not a preacher, but that's how I grew up because I didn't want to be in trouble. I didn't want to be dead. I seen people around me, you know, growing up, friends of mine, best friends of mine passing away because they were on the streets and they were doing the wrong thing. And, and this mm -hmm. is in New York and in New York at that time, it's just like the gun has no mercy. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So mm -hmm. I didn't want to be one of those, you know, those people on the streets. I wanted to just, you know, be a person and and basically live life and if i could express you know my feelings and my views on music that's what will happen and then mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to do that so you know if you say peace is not the word to play peace is definitely not the word to play and that's something that we wanted to represent for people that were you know killing and shooting you know yeah. other people and not respecting one another or respecting that this person could have like a sister or a brother or a baby or whatever and then you just shoot that person or whatever you know what yeah. i'm saying so people have to respect life and understand it's very valuable you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and it it's already too short you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so yeah let's value what we have right now and and live life as we can live life you know what i mean live life to the fullest you know what i mean and Absolutely. we're we're here you know what i mean so that's you know i don't want to be too preachy or like yo like you know what i'm saying no like, it's jewels it's, come on man yeah, yeah 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 so that's that's pretty much you know what i mean how i how i feel you know with with certain things and i mean as as again as a bunch of young men um like watch Roger do his thing, you know, there's, uh -huh. there's a strong message there. And uh, when you, and, and it's like, it's delivered also very well. And um, uh -huh. even on, even on the second album, you know, like even on the uh -huh. second main source album, uh, uh -huh. what is it? Diary of a Hitman? Yeah. 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 I, I wanted to ask yeah. you, yeah. With Mikey D. Yeah. I wanted to ask yeah. you, what was the inspiration behind that track? Cause you know, when I listened to that, uh, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah where, where's this going but it's some serious um, like psychological stuff in there <laughs> it was like the funny thing about it is just like w all right when main source broke up the the original main source with myself um scratch and large pro mm -hmm. when when we broke up it was i felt that we still needed to you know carry on our messages and visions and stuff like that mm -hmm. and basically like it was not a record that album was not an album to be like oh main source is just about you know large it's it's not about large professors it's about main source we were, we're creative kids you know what right. i'm saying and we yeah. just want to make music you know what i mean yes. and that's yeah. what it was about it wasn't to prove a point on who did what and what da 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 it was about we need to make music and express ourselves and basically like you know myself and mikey d were just talking and you know about situations and things and you know where we live and shit like that and it was just mm -hmm. like yo i got a, i got an idea diary of a hitman this this will be you know a great great record and he basically you know put his experience and what he felt in this song you know what i mean and when i brought the music to him um he was just like, yo, I got something for it. And this is what it is. You know what mm. I mean? And that's how it came out. And again, like you hear like the influences of like reggae in there. I, I, I used mm. Sister Nancy again on a different record. You know what I mean? And it actually like, it kind of felt right for that song. You know what I mean? Like boom, chaka, laka, laka, boom, 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 boom. And the, and the, and the, the lyrics that he was spitting, it was just like, oh shit, that, that works. It makes mm. sense. Like, you know what I mean? So everything you know again i i you're gonna hear me say a line a lot because it everything does align when it's when it when it feels right you know what i mean mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah that's that's yeah that's that's pretty much with that song you know yeah and then with um still going on that album uh -huh. with fuck what you think uh -huh. um that's the title track uh -huh. and uh we're uh, first of all that beat is oh my god you made that beat yeah 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 that beats I, like th thanks i i pretty much did that well I, I did that whole album um and co-produce what was it uh only the real survive i co-produced only the real survive it was uh actually maestro's dj 
who was working oh. with, who came along and started working with me on, on beats. He used to come over to my house in, um, in, in, in Toronto. And um, we started making beats and stuff like that. But he co-produced that song, um, Only the Real Survive. And okay. um, yeah, that was the only song he did on the album. But yeah, LTD, big, big um, shouts to LTD. That's my dude. But um, yeah, he, he, yeah, he was definitely uh, inspiration too, because we would just like sit there and like, just vibe, you know what I mean? But um, mm -hmm. Fuck What You Think was, it's basically, it's basically a record like, you know when people, you know, put it this way, it's just what it is. Fuck what you think. Yeah. If you think, if you, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it is, that's what it is. Fuck yeah, what man. you really think. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not here yeah. to prove shit to you. Fuck what you think. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's basically that song. And that's in and honestly, I'm I'm legit legit. Like that's how we felt about the album. Fuck what you think. You know what I mean? This is us. Did um did the breakup have anything to do with that, or were you trying to just continue making music and and um, cement yourself as a group? Like, uh, partially, partially had you know something to do with it because mm -hmm. you know back then it was just like fuck we had we were around like a lot of you know our peers who were like the tribes and the Delas and you know uh, brand Nubians and leaders and all of that and it was almost like it felt like you know although you know they were still friends of ours but it felt like you know for me at the time it was like whose side are you going to be on are you going to be on that side or are you going to be on this side mm -hmm. so you know when we were doing the album it was just like you know what fuck what anybody thinks man we're just going to do what we do like you know mm -hmm. what i mean and and, mm -hmm. and just make music you know mm -hmm. what i mean so i mean you know that's that's pretty much what what it what it what it what it was and what it is you know what mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. you know and i mean you you did your thing on on set it off you know that Dang. was that was the first uh locks record yes yeah. introducing yes. the locks yeah introducing the locks on the on the yeah. first album you introduced nas and yeah you know Akin yeah. and the next album you introduced the locks like yeah yeah yeah, yeah y'all deserve some real credits there thank, thank, <laughs> real thank you pop legacy credits <laughs> yeah. thank you and thank the track you. is really hot too thank you that is very good yeah that that was um oh shit sorry my bad I didn't produce that record either. Uh, uh, another dude, I forget the dude that produced that record, but he, my brother um, was friends with this dude. I forget the producer's name. And um, he brought that record and, and, and my brother showed me the song because I'm like one of these kind of like perfectionist kind of dudes. It's like, it's got to sound a certain way. It's got to, drums have to be chopped this way, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, but I actually, I said, yo, this record is pretty dope. Like, so we ended up putting that record on and, and um, my brother is the one that found the locks. It wasn't me. Okay. So he thought he brought the, um, I think it was Mikey, Mikey and my brother found the locks and um, they brought them to my attention. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, played the track and we're like, oh, we're, this is the studio we're gonna be at, you know what I mean? Boom. And they came up to the studio and that that was it. You know what I mean? We, we laid it down. They were called the Warlocks at the time. That's they right. weren't the Locks, they were the, they were the Warlocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was it was Jadakiss and Sheik Luch that came up and, and, and threw it down on, on, um, on that track, set it yeah. off. Yeah, 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 that, that's, um... That I wanted to ask you, what was your your uh, weapon of choice as a producer in at the time? Um, in terms of gear? Y yeah, like drum machines or. Oh well, I've 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 always was a fan of the SB12 because the SB12 just had the sound, mm. and um, I used the SB12 and the S950, the Akai S950. Those were like the two weapons of choice. Mm because the, the SB12 at certain points, like you run out of sampling time. So the S950 was an addition to keep your samples long and you can still chop it up and filter it, you know what I mean? And do all your funky business to it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So those were my two weapons of choice, you know, back then. And I was able to like, you know, create some, you know, crazy stuff with it, you know? So yeah, I would say the SB1200, Emu SB1200 and 
the uh, Akai S950 be the weapons. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I am also a little curious about the uh, the main source album cover because I remember mm -hmm. when I when I first saw it, I was like, "This is probably a really good album <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. it's very creative. Uh, it's very different, and mm -hmm. it speaks a lot to what you know." The, what you might assume the crew is trying to do in mm -hmm. the music, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it speaks a lot to how, how hip hop, uh, especially the kind of production that was going on on the, on the album, you know, where mm -hmm. you're sampling and chopping up beats and layering mm -hmm. different sounds on one another and drums and this and that. It is kind of like being in a lab. Um, mm -hmm. So how, who came up with the album uh, concept it's, and even the group? It's funny. Um, okay, so the the name of the group was made by me. Mm -hmm. I made the name main source up, and I and I brought it. I brought it to the uh, you know the other guys in the group, and I said, "Yo, large, you know, scratch. What do you think about this thing?" And for me, again, like with main source, it's like when when you really think about it, everything has to come from a source, right? And I wanted it to be us, the main source of everything. You see what I'm saying? So it made sense, right? So now when you have the album Breaking Atoms, it comes together, it mm. aligns, everything mm. starts to align, right? So basically with the album, the, 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 owners, the owner of the label, his wife, Amy Fine, there was Stu Fine and Amy, Amy Fine. Amy Fine was the one that did all the art direction on, on uh, Wild Pitch. So mm. she, basically came up with the whole kind of Adam's breaking and she kind of explained, you know, us what her vision was. And, you know, we said, shit, that sounds good. It goes with, you know, the name of the album, which we named it Breaking Adams. So she came up with the whole swirls and the Breaking Adams. Then the photographer, um, I believe his name was Peter Baraki. He's the one that came up with the, you know, put the needle on the, on the record. And then from there, you know, Amy was like, all right, it's going to explode. And, you know, out of the atoms, you're going to have the birth of all of this shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the birth of, you know, the atoms breaking would be Nas, you know, the, the, you know, just everything that we did in general, like, you know what I mean? So that's, yeah. that explains like the atoms breaking, you know what I mean? There's going to be a lot of birth of, you know, some legendary shit that's coming out of it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know and the messages you know what i mean so that's that's the whole breaking adam's theme you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah okay that's dope that's <laughs> yeah cool, thank man. you thank you um now outside of after after uh the group split when you created oh. when, when main source did the second album were you still in new york or had you moved back to toronto it's funny because that's when I was like transitioning um, between do I want to stay in New York or do I want to stay in Toronto? Yeah. Right. And I had a, I had at the time I had a condo, I had bought a condo and, and I was in Toronto and that's where my whole, my, my collection was my record collection. My gear was out here. So mm -hmm. I started to basically, you know, do the album from Toronto and I brought Mikey D up to uh, Toronto and he mm. stayed with, he stayed with me for a couple of weeks and we kind of constructed like, you know, basically uh, a map of, you know, the whole fuck what you think album. And mm. then um, once I had like a solid, like kind of, you know, five or six songs, then I went into the studio in, in New York city and basically winged it with other, you know, songs that I put together. You know, I just brought like a, maybe two crates of records down and like had sort of an idea of what I wanted to do, you mm -hmm. know, and basically did everything in New York. The balance was done in New York in terms of um, production and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so when you kind of settled down in Toronto and were more situated in Toronto than in New York, mm -hmm. uh, what was that transition from like hip hop, American hip hop from, you know, I mean, the birthplace in New York City uh, to yeah. Canadian hip hop in New York. And what, what year was this as well? Probably like around, 
I want to say like 94, like 93, 93, end of okay. 92 to 93. Okay. Um, I was like, I was definitely out here. And when I was out here, it was funny because, you know, I started working with other cats out here. Yeah. And, um, and it's funny because um, from Maestro, it was, um, I was working with Down to Earth. And I did this song called Formations mm. with, um, with mathematics. So they came over okay. like, though, yeah, though, thank you. Those, those are like, like my, my people. So like I was hanging out with down to earth mathematics and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I was actually working on their album, trying to get them a, a, a record deal. So, um, mm. from, from them, I started working with, uh, um, people started hitting me up and it was like the God bodies, you know what I mean? Like I did, I did one record with them, um, get down on your knees or something, something like that. And it was just like this raw beat that, you know what I mean? So it was basically like, I was kind of like bringing that New York city sound to, you know, the city at the time, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I kind of like, you know, I started touching on like, like a lot of these independent artists that wanted, you know, me to do records and yeah, I just started building from there. You know what I mean? And then I ended up um, working with Shaq Claire. I did, I did um, a record with um, uh, Socrates on his album that didn't come out. And this record was like, me and Socks was like, yo, this is going to be the record. This is going to be the record. But it never came out. But um, mm. yeah, it, it, it just started, it was like a building thing. Like I started building and I started like doing like, different things out here because I was living out here and I, and I was just contributing towards, you know, scene and stuff like that here. You know what I mean? And, you know, again, like you start to, I, I was, I was, I'm out here. So it's just like, you know, I might as well try to adapt to the culture and the scene and, and share my musical feel on things. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and did I, did I, I ended up doing this record for Infinite called Gotta Get Mine, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like one of those records where it's just like, I'm bringing, I'm going to bring, you know, my element. And, you know, they were like, you know, great records, you know what I mean? Cool, cool little underground hits, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it was cool. Like, I, I, I definitely brought my thing to the game out here at in, in the 90s, you know what I mean? And, and you know, so, yeah, it was dope. And what did you th what do you think that you brought here? Um, I think I brought like the way I produce, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. The K cut, the K cut kind of thing, because, you know, like a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot of people like I like, I just brought my knowledge and how I sample and how I would flip a, a drum or a, how I would flip a sample. You know what I mean? Okay. And I think that's what a lot of people were, were liking that. It was like, oh shit, K cut, like, yo, main source. But yeah, it was, I'm bringing my energy to the table. And I think that's, you know, why like records like Gotta Get Mine was very successful, you know, in, in Toronto because it was different. It wasn't like the, mm. the, you know what I mean? Like it was just like, oh shit, he flipped this guy flipped, you know, the, the Dinah Ross, like missing you, like, Oh, like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's just kind of one of those things where again, like it goes to the vibes of the records. Like I was just listening to that record and I was like, I really like that record. Like, how can I do it? Like, so I just did me. I, you know what I mean? I just flipped it the way I wanted to flip it. And it was just like, he happened to like that record. And it was just like, all right, let's rock with that. And mm. you know, that's what I did. Like, you know, even with Chuck Claire, it was just like, you know, I would play beats and he would be like, yo, that's the one I want, Kate. Like, like, we'll do it different. Like, you know, like, we'll get Julie to sing on it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like textures and like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. just something different and out of the ordinary. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I try to go for sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, and again, like, I, I was like a huge, like, like, I love, like, like ballady records like you know missing you diana ross and and i was a huge like fan of like well i still am <laughs> janet jackson and mm -hmm. um and that's how i use again we're going forward but that's how i i you know i gave the sample to um when i did the uh, big pun record it was yes. it was it was it was that record because that was just the vibes right yeah. and it's funny because i i, I use that same record on citizen kane too we did a record called um, 
what was Raising Cane? So, yeah, Raising Cane. That was Janet Jackson. You mm. know what I mean? So that was like one of my albums that I was like, yo, let me pull up the good old Janet, you know, because <laughs> there's something on there's something on there. You know what I mean? So Yeah. I, yeah. I wanted to ask you actually, do you this is probably hard to mm. dig back in your memory, but do you have like a favorite sample that you flipped and made a beat out of for any any record? Mm. Um it's that's kind of vast, but it's, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 weird because there's a, there's records that I I love like shit. I'm looking at my collection right now and I'm just like looking at records. But uh, I I was gonna ask you off of the main source album, but uh-huh. I mean like your your catalog is like so much. Uh-huh. It's so much beyond just that one album. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like there are uh-huh. some incredible albums or incredible. I mean, incredible Songs. samples, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, like everything, you know, I, I didn't, before doing a lot of digging into mm-hmm. your uh, production, mm-hmm. you know, you produced some of my favorite Canadian hip hop tracks. Thank and you. Uh, I was like, Thank damn, you. you know? So, and, and, and the cool, the, the funny thing is that when I was starting to get hip to these uh, Canadian tracks from the 90s, Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like Mathematic, Down to Earth, uh, mm-hmm. Maestro, the Grassroots, like mm-hmm. Socrates. Um, I, I was wondering a lot because I was too young at the time to, to be following um, Toronto hip hop or mm-hmm. even, you know, hip hop in general. I'm, I, I was born mm-hmm. in 95. So, um, mm-hmm. but when I listened back to it, I'm like, okay, sonically, this sounds, it, it's got that New York flavor a little bit it's got mm. that that uh vibe but mm. there's something still very unique to it you know it's it's very mm. um i don't know it, it's it's like you're uh it, it, it grows a lot yeah you know? like these beats it, are kind of expansive yeah 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 it, it, it was again like i i want to say when i were it's so strange because when i when i officially moved back to toronto like that's when like you know, the, the game was shifting from, you know, it, the conducting things kind of sound to yeah. like, we needed more like grittier, like, you know what I mean? We needed yeah. more streety, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Beefy cool. kind of shit. So, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? So MCs were like, nah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be Kane. I'm going to be like on some, like it was moving towards like mob deep and like everybody was yes. like on that real, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. That's when I started like, okay, down to earth with like, to me, like they stuck out to me because mathematics had like a dope kind of sound. Like, you know, his voice mm-hmm. is smooth, but it was just like, he was like, like knowledge, knowledge, like, you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. you know what I mean? So that's what, that's what made me like, really like, all right, cool. Like they were always at my crib and they were like, oh, let's, let's do it. So we just came up with that, that record. I, I again, like I, I pulled out this, um, it was a Blackbirds album, and I was like, yo, this shit, like, I think would be kind of cool. Mm. And, like, I just play records, and, and they were like, yo, that's the record right there. You mm. know what I mean? So that's what, you know, formations, you know what I mean? It, it, we actually, yeah, we did that. We did the yeah. whole demo at my house, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, yeah. I think, again, like, the, the sound was shifting. Just, you know, like, mm-hmm. it's like, from that time to what it is now, you see like how Toronto was like kind of like making its way, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And creating its own kind of thing. But it took, you know, a lot of um, things to happen for us to get where we are now. And people look back and say, you know, I got to fuck with Toronto. I got to see what's out there because Drake is out there or, you know what I mean? Or, you know, so it, it's, it, it took Drake to like, you know, put us in that category where people look at toronto like we are to be fucked with you know what i'm saying yeah and it, and it took you know when i came up here like you know in the 90s or whatever you know people were looking at toronto like uh you 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 guys have maestro like who else do you have like you know what i mean and i used to tell people like yo there's dope mcs out here and people were like mm-hmm. you know like uh, i don't know about that but it's just like mm-hmm. it takes one person to break it 
and make it really good to for everybody else to really understand. And now, like, fuck, man, like everybody around the world are like, yo, I gotta go to Toronto. I gotta go to Toronto. Like, you know, I've been saying that for years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've been saying it for years. You know, mm -hmm. but but like, you know, it is what it is. And 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 I'm glad we are, you know, at that, you know place where it's just like we are recognized we have a sound and and i think you know again with the music that's coming out of here the trap sound is basically like i think we took the trap sound and basically made it more like that's the sound for the world you know what i'm saying because you have producers out here that are like really molding that sound and doing their shit like t minus and boy wonder like they're the ones that are molding that shit and people are you know like and murder beats like people are like listening to that shit and like we trying to recreate like the sound so you know if toronto has a sound now yeah we do have a sound and it's crazy you know what mm -hmm. i mean and that's we came from we came from one thing to another thing and now we're here you know what mm -hmm. i mean with 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 that toronto sound you know what i mean mm -hmm. so and I think it's still growing, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot more young people that are still in their basements and still tweaking out what they're going to do. And, mm -hmm. and they're just about to bust and we'll see, you know what I mean? But yeah, we, we, we started it and, you know, we're going to finish it, you know what I mean? Kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, so <laughs> we're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, that cooled out Toronto sound, um, from, from the nineties, particularly oh, like yeah. I, I feel like we need to be hearing that more and we, and especially when we talk about, you know, yeah. like, you know, classic golden era hip hop. Yeah. Because when I listen to like old recordings of radio shows, like from like New York radio shows yeah, yeah. on like hot 97 or like Pete rock and, and right. uh, Marley mall or uh, even stretch and Bobito, you know what I mean? Like right. I'm hearing mathematic on there. Yeah. I'm hearing maestro. I'm hearing yeah. shock Claire. And yeah. you know, the first few times I was like, Whoa, yeah. You know, they were playing this in New York in, in the 90s. Like, yeah. they knew about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but yeah. they did, you know, they yeah, did. Yeah, because, I mean, again, like, that was, uh, that was a sound that was progressing, like, at the time. Yeah. Ghetto, ghetto concept, grassroots, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. solitaire and, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, um, Cardinal and all of those guys. And oh, yeah. Those were, those were, like, the guys that were, like, all right, cool. Like we're not gonna be on some, you know, you know, uh, Big Daddy Kane and like, you know, yeah. rap kind of thing. They were like progressing, so yeah. they they have, they're like the guys that pretty much like created the new sound. I think you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and shifted the way music was going. You know what I mean, A mm -hmm. along with my, you know, me contributing towards some some of the music back then. You know what I mean. So I think um, you're right. I wish that there was more, you know, of that happening now you know what i mean and and i think there is but you know people just gotta show and prove and just like you know bring it out like you know mm -hmm. what i mean they, they, we definitely have like you know underground un, underground like you know hip-hop stuff like that but it's just more or less like is it you know in the center or the front no it's not it's mm -hmm. behind you know mm -hmm. what i mean so yeah. you know we again it's just it's just gotta be i think personally we got to have like more you know movements in terms of like like you know uh, awareness and parties you know that would yeah. accentuate things like that you know what i mean and get back mm -hmm. to like okay let's play like 90s like tribe called quest you walk in here but need apple bomb that kind of you know vibe and that's yeah. that's it's a funny thing because that's like when I, when i started you know djing more in the city i would kind of sneak that stuff then you know yeah. although you know some people were like yo where's the fucking you know the the, the little dirks or the, the you know what i mean like, yeah the, yeah you know yeah like you gotta like kind of slip that in like you know yeah. oh throwing a little biggie you know what i mean one more chance or you know what i mean just so yeah. you can introduce that so people have the awareness you know what i mean and and that's the funny thing because it was, the states was built on this shit you know what i mean mm. so even the little kids to this day like Biggie or Pac or you know that's a tribe called Quest or whatever it's just like it's like almost embedded in them you know what I'm saying to understand mm -hmm. and know that shit I mean, you know and then you have some of the kids that you know oh shit they're clueless but the majority you know they know their hip-hop and mm -hmm. you know that's you know I would like you know for a lot of these kids you know out here to understand and know that their hip-hop and know that yo there were legends here too you know you got that shocks and you got that you know grass 
truths. Those are the, and then the infinites. Those are the guys that kind of, you know, basically, you know, jump started like what, what's, what's happening now. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, you know, I just think, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't respect and appreciate, you know, these artists, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 100%. And it, it, it's a, sh it's a shame, you know, yeah. because these are the guys that got, the uh, these other guys to where they are right now like you know what i mean yeah. so yeah. without them there wouldn't be you know there wouldn't be drake so there wouldn't be like tory lanes or any of these other guys you know what i mean without these yeah. guys doing it you know yeah. so you yeah. know you gotta you know bt can only go so far you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i mean like the artists themselves like it's it's I don't know what the game was like back, you know, in, in the 90s, for example, but right now when you have social media and you have the charts and you have the internet and you have all these like clean cut looking videos and just, you know, there's so much, so many elements mm -hmm. when it comes to sharing music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and consuming it, you mm -hmm. know, can't mm -hmm. forget about streaming and Spotify mm -hmm. and all that. Um, and I agree, like so much of this, even education, of mm -hmm. the music comes through attending parties yeah and you know kind of being outside you know on the block and mm -hmm. and you know you know and right mm -hmm. now it's it's kind of not happening yeah of course uh, <laughs> but before before the pandemic um shit was mm -hmm. still kind of different you know and yeah i mean i mean like again it, it's you know it's like they have like I don't know, you, you should know, Toronto Collectives and all of that, right? Yeah. They're on Instagram. They do yeah. their certain kind of thing. And then they have like Scratch yes. Bastard. You know what I mean? So yes. we need cratery. more. Uh, yeah, Cratery, my man, RC. Yes. So you, we got to do more of those kind of things. And I spoke to RC about that too. It's just like, yo, like this, you know, I want to start doing more parties where it's just like, you know, you're introducing. Because like for me, like I grew up, I grew up in New York, but I'm like one of like, we call it like you know how like you have queen street here in kensington market i was i was always like that kind of you know kensington market queen street kind of dude but we had like soho the village so that's mm -hmm. where i used to hang out in the village and you know have like you know big big shoes and slope haircuts and funky you know funky wear you know mm -hmm. what i mean that was my thing so you know i'm always like that kind of like you got to be on the edge of the, you know what I mean? The trendy taste making, you know, kind of thing. And that's what I like doing. And I think we need more of that where, you know, you could still yeah. play the shit that's happening now, but you could still introduce and rock with, you know, what's happened back then as well. You know what yeah. I mean? So there, there, there's a balance, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the thing is like, I'm, I'm a little bit optimistic, I guess, mm -hmm. when it comes to this, but I really do believe that if you introduce people to these records and like that's why i dj with them you know i i insist on playing what really moves me and for sure like 98 percent of that is was made like before the year 2000 yeah uh, and i insist on playing that stuff because i'm really convinced that if people hear it for the first time you know that stuff is funky yeah it that is stuff funky. is you know that stuff yeah. is is that makes you groove like yeah it is, it is, is funky. soulful yeah yeah it's it, again it's just like stuff like that is that's why it's like mu that that music is timeless because again you know people back then were thinking like when they pulled out like again like a james brown record like i keep looking down because i'm looking at the um the records <laughs> you know and 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 basically like using that as like people put it this way people gravitate to funky shit you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah. and you know like i said earlier from back then to now it's only it's only it's a full circle it transcends right so it's mm -hmm. like whatever happened then you know in the 90s it's gonna happen again 2000 and then evolve everything evolves and it comes back around you know what i mean mm -hmm. even with style and trend like you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you know it's all circles around again it's just altered it's all 90s just, right now <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's altered but it yes. circles back around same shit you know what i mean so yeah. you know that's that's what it is that's how things work you know what i mean full circle kind of thing mm. you know but um yeah yeah i just i just think um in terms of movement 
you know, you know, when when this whole thing, pandemic thing is gone and we're we're free, I'm gonna start to pop out and do a little bit more stuff. And mm. and what I do, I'm gonna probably. I want to start like a little cult, a little movement in terms of like ninety stuff, but still mm. play progressive stuff that's out now. And I'll I'll probably invite some friends out, you know, special guests and and mm. say, okay, yo, Pete, Pete Rock, come out and you know what I mean, do a little, you know, you know, stuff, stuff mm -hmm. like that, like mm -hmm. just cool shit that people like, because people want, like when I'm in Kensington Market, right, and I'm playing at Colt T, people don't want to, you know, they they want to listen to music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They want to feel good. They want to drink a beer. They want to, you know, smoke their little L's and, and, but feel good. You know what I mean? And that's, that's why I kind of like that, that whole vibey thing, because it's just like, you know, you're not in like the, the center of everything. You're going to Thompson hotel and, you know, people are just, you know, standing there and drinking bottles and, you know, popping bottles and they're all facetious and like, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's fake. Everything is fake. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's yeah. why I don't, I don't go in crowds like that. I like to be around people that, you know, vibey shit, you know what I mean? Oh, Where yeah. It's just real shit, legit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, I can, I, I, I can talk about this shit. <laughs> I, a man, I totally hear you. We're, we're trying to start a, a movement like this here in London. Uh -huh. um, and it's funny because for us, you know, mm -hmm. like, have you ever been to London? Uh, oh. I, I've been to London probably years ago. Yeah. Year, years yeah. ago. Why? Mm -hmm. no, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> not many. Only of those is for family. Well, you guys are, you're, you're, come. No, I, I, I was out there. I think I was buying records or something. Oh, okay. Not, this is years ago, but I'm like a hunter, so I like I hunt for records and stuff like that. So I'll travel yeah. anywhere, you know yeah. what I mean? But um, yeah, that this is years ago, but um, but you're close to Detroit, so yes. uh, yeah, that would be kind of cool because cross over the border and there's record stores right there too. Oh yeah, so. <laughs> yeah man. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah. of London records, I actually got two of these. I think uh, yeah, both of these I got from London, and these are both you. I got Fake in the Funk. Oh. Nice. Right nice. Yes. And it's actually, it's, it's like a miss, uh, it's a mistaken sleeve. It says it's looking at the front door and watch uh -huh. Roger do his thing, but oh, it's, wow. it's just uh, faking the funk on the inside, but I'm not it, mad. That's crazy. Is that an OG press? I think so because it, it looks legit. It doesn't look like a bootleg. It's got a serial number and oh, everything. Wow. That's I haven't crazy. checked it. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That and, looks OG to me. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so I was happy to have that. Nice. And um, I heard that you produced on this album. Yeah, I did. I did. So I was looking up the credits to see which tracks yeah, you did. It's it's the Golden Boy. Oh. Because at one Golden point, Boy? the Golden Boy was my my alter ego kind of like uh -huh. name. So um, at that time, I was just like, and even on the seven hundred two, I think it it might say the Golden Boy or might say. Um, it might say K Cut, but under the um, publishing it says it would say K McKenzie, Kevin McKenzie. So yeah, right, right. So I, I did a, a song called One on One, um, and then um, there's what is the other one? There's another one that was produced with uh, Jermaine Dupri and myself and Rashad Smith. It was um, was it, it was Drug with Lord the, Superstar? Yeah, Drug Lord Superstar. Yeah. 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 That, that's one of my favorite tracks on on this album. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I, I, I definitely wanted, didn't want to forget to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I saw Rashad on there on like a couple yeah. of the tracks. So I thought, okay, you know, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were like, um, it, it's funny because at the time, like when Main Source broke up and I was like, kind of like in my depression stage because, you know, people do get mm. depressed. Mm. I was just like, he, he called me and he was like, yo, come and work with me. You know, I, mm. I just, I just did, I just did this Buster record and, and at the time it was Wuha, mm. you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's when Tumbling Dice started to start to go crazy because of, you know, that Wuha record. And then from there, it was just like, you know, became a big situation. So he called me and he was like, yo, just come, man. Like, I, I always love the way you program and you know what I mean? Like, you're just dope at what you do. So I was just like, all right. So I went out to New York and then we started cooking up records we started cooking and um he was just like yo i'm gonna 
you know, put it out to these people and that people. And yeah, I, I was a part of Tumbling Dice at one point, mm. you know, and yeah, he's the reason why I was able to do a lot of the, uh, the, the, the newer records. And he actually, sh he actually changed the way I started doing things because he started working with Puffy mm. and that's when um, he did, he did, he did the record for Biggie and all of that. So he kind of changed the way I, my direction of, okay, I don't need to sample jazz shit all the time. I can mm. start sampling like, you know, these little eighty songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's when, when I came back to Toronto, I was able to sample up like, you know, you know, missing you from, you know, Diana Ross and kind of give it like that little, you know, commercial, so cool. like, yeah, yeah that, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. and then, um, yeah, that's that's what gave me the idea to, to use, you know, um, the Janet Jackson. Let's wait a while for a big pun. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he actually helped me improve what I was doing as a producer, you know, mm. and we're family to this day. Like, you know, like when he's out with Erica Badu, he's like, yo, I'm in the city. And I talked to him pretty much every single day I talked to him. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> that's, my, that's, that's my cousin. That's my family. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're like, yeah, we're good. That's you know? yeah. That is so amazing too. You have you have that like so much music running through your blood. You know, yeah, it's a real I, family affair. Yeah, it's 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 crazy and it's it's a blessing. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like it's yeah. it's a blessing. We're we're fortunate to be able to you know, I I'm just glad that I have contributed towards, you know, an era and music that that hopefully is a timeless pieces, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. So yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah, and and you worked with some, you know, <laughs> even outside of hip hop, like you, you, yeah. um, you've done a lot, you know, you worked with. Yeah, it's, it's so funny because I'm trying to like remember, like who, who else did I work with? I know it's it's, it's a lot of people, but <laughs> you know, it's just like I can't remember. You know, what I mean, it's just you know, but I've 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 done a lot. I've done a I've done a lot, and I've done records that people probably don't even know I was on. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that i was robbed credits but it is what it is mm -hmm. you know that's that's a part of the the, the game you know what i mean so yeah yeah, yeah. i you mean know, you live and you learn yeah and, and that's happened on some of like you know the biggest biggest records um and uh yeah, yeah. and it's something i noticed too about producers especially like mm -hmm. Producers are just probably some of my favorite people in hip hop. Like, yeah. you know, y'all are just the most, like, like we said, humble, cooled out and, and just loving of the music. Um, yeah. And so I know you, uh, I know that there's, there, there's definitely this relationship with DJing and producing. Like I find myself sometimes, you know, saying I, have this urge to, to start production, you know, and, uh -huh. it, and it just comes from listening to different records and uh -huh. feeling uh -huh. out different grooves. And, you know, when uh -huh. you mix records, when you scratch, et cetera, it comes uh -huh. from that. Uh -huh. um, you were working on a, a documentary about DJing a few years back. Yeah, I was. Um, it's funny because DJing, the documentary is, it was called Hey DJ. Okay. And, and, basically like i was working with a few people that didn't you know when you it's basically they weren't the right people mm. you know what i mean they weren't the right people at all to work with um film, they, film or like film, film wise and partner film wise and partnership okay. so that's why i i stopped doing it but uh the concept of that that film was basically um hey dj malcolm mclaren you know what i mean and taking it back to where you know the the mm -hmm. essence started you know what i mean mm -hmm. how it started and just the cool elements about djing like taking it back to where the how did they make create this first turntable kind of thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you know where did techniques come from you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you know, that kind of shit. That's the information that I was trying to go at, but making it cool, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And bringing it up to speed with inter interviewing, like I had interviews with uh, African Bombada. Yeah. Um, I had interviews with, um, shit, uh, 
every, a lot of people. But mm. once the partnership, I felt the partnership was like, this is not going to happen. These guys are not the right fit. I just stopped it. You know what okay. I mean? But um, it, it was going to be very interesting, you know, in terms of the, the film, because I, I felt that, you know, a lot of people and aspiring DJs and producers would enjoy something like that because it's just like when you introduce the 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 basic like oh shit where how who thought of making a turntable and who thought of using that for scratching and you know what I mean like the mm-hmm. fundamentals of of things like that like mm-hmm. I would want to know because I'm a I'm a I'm a documentary buff like I love watching anything that has to do with documentary and music and 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 getting more knowledge like you know what I mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, like, it, it, it's crazy. I mean, I, I, I wish it was something that came out and, you know, it, it was, it was, it was a good idea and a good concept, but, you know, yeah, I wish it, it didn't make it, it didn't make it to, you know. Ugh, I'm upset. You know. Yeah. I was doing so much digging for that online. Yeah. I yeah. It. I didn't even know what it was yeah. called, you know, just yeah. so much yeah. like- yeah. DJ K yeah. Cut documentary yeah. Kevin. Yeah. yeah, I called it. Yeah, I called. I called the film Hey DJ. Yeah, and I, that was a concept. Like, um, I was actually, you know, Rashad was gonna hook me up with like, um, like getting the rights to like the whole um, graphics and stuff. Not not graphics. The 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 music to to Hey DJ, and then um, I was gonna use this dude. Um, that was um I forget his name. Um he's like a famous like artist. Like he was next to like Basquiat. Um Herring? He had glass Keith Herring. Keith Herring? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was gonna use like like the the whole Keith Herring kind of like, you know, fonts and stuff like that yeah. for Hey DJ. So there it was like a whole concept, like the whole like it was gonna be crazy. It was gonna be crazy. Is there any chance that it could it could make it out of the, um, uh, the vault? And I don't know. I don't know. I I'm working on something right now, and and this is just an idea. But if I could get this idea out and and deliver it, you know, to film, mm-hmm. then definitely, D- hey DJ would definitely be the next thing I would do, the next project I would do. Okay. You know what I mean? But um. I'm definitely trying to work on something right now in, in, in terms of writing a script and doing a film right now. Okay. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be a really cool story. But um, yeah, if I could, if I could actually do this one and get it and deliver it to the public and it's legit, then Hey DJ will definitely be on there for sure. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah. That would be the next project I work on for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep the mystery, you know, fermenting there about yeah. that. I'm not going to ask, All right. but I'm interested. All right, cool. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> no yeah, problem. No yeah, problem. We'll, yeah. I just got to keep watch. Yeah, you were doing some digging, boy. Holy smokes. Hey, nice. That's what this I'm is. I'm impressed. Man. Yeah, yeah, I'm impressed. All right, cool, cool, I did cool, my cool. job. Good. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? <laughs> oh, okay. Let's, let's go, man. I have... We're good. We're about at an hour and a half ish, I think. Here, I got time. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, okay, I got a question for you. Yes. Uh, what? Just, just as a, as a producer, but then also maybe if if you got an answer as a DJ, I'd I'd love to hear it. As a producer, mm-hmm. what's your superpower? Mm. What do you do really well? That's that's a good one. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I I think in terms of I think I am a good orchestrator in terms of knowing what f- works with what. You know what mm. I mean and and what vibes what you know what i mean because when you as a dj and you know as a dj dj's make the best producers mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i tell people this all the time as a dj you can blend things you know what i mean and sonically know what works with what you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. and 
and when you're a DJ to a producer, you can do the same thing sonically and you know and know what works with what, whether it's vocals, horns, drums, or whatever. You could take whatever and flip it and make it work. You know what I mean? So I think um, orchestration, you know, would probably be one of my coolest and dopest like superpowers. You know, mm. as a producer. You mm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would say that, yes. Okay, cool. And as a DJ? Um, as a DJ. A DJ is another, it's, as you know, being a DJ, it's like very mystical in terms of <laughs> knowing how to make people smile, make people dance. Yeah. And, and, and it's not something that anybody could do. It's mm. just how you do it and mm-hmm. how you vibe like you you can't just go and say i'm gonna fuck this party up everybody's gonna be like i'm gonna be that dude mm-hmm. it doesn't work like that you know what mm-hmm. i mean you go into a place and you see the crowd and you feel the crowd out and by playing one song sets a tone so from mm-hmm. that tone that you set from mm-hmm. that first physical song that you put on and if people jump on that mm-hmm. then you know exactly what to do you mm-hmm. can take it you can take them it's like you're guiding them to where you want to go you yes. have a, you know what i mean you're stringing them along so it's just like oh, yeah. i got you here <laughs> i'm gonna take you there mm-hmm. and you're going there we're gonna go here right now mm-hmm. and if they if they rock with you then that means you got them like it's just basically like you know you're you're like riding the horse kind of thing you know what i mean you're showing mm-hmm. them which way to go like you know what i mean so mm-hmm. i would say you know i would say that in terms mm-hmm. of djing like you know it's just a mystic thing that you just vibe out and you just like you know you yeah. do you, yeah you know yeah, yeah. That, that's my approach too and the thing is like i i can't think about it too much because a lot of times when you're in a certain mood or you're in a certain space when things hit you, you know, mm-hmm. music, music wise, when you're putting, when you're DJing, you know, um, sometimes I overthink it a little bit and I'm like, okay, well, this is how I'm feeling, but what about the crowd? Cause I, I know my musical brain, you know, mm-hmm. I know how I respond to certain mm-hmm. tracks and certain sounds and mm-hmm. what patterns kind of get me lifted or get me in a different zone. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing with certain albums too. Like, I, you know the uh, the Marvin Gaye album, Here My Dear? Yeah, yeah. That whole album does that, you know, from yeah. start to finish. Yeah, yeah. And... It, <laughs> it, it, you know what it is? Um, <laughs> I, tell, I tell people all the time, like, because I, I, I'll, I'm going to just tell you this, like, me being a DJ, I, before, I used to get so scared of just going out and DJing for like 500 people or even performing. Like, you know, I would like it'd be a, a crowd and I get like kind of nervous at first, you know what I mean? And that's just natural, right? But mm-hmm. like, I would be like, no, I'm not going on. And everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing? You got to go on. Like, you know, fucking you're, you're here to DJ. Like, and I'm like, fuck, fuck, because you don't know what's going to hit that crowd like you know the first song you play you could bomb out i played parties where people are just not interested you know what i mean and that was probably like like maybe one or two parties but then after that you learn you you learn you from when you bomb out right so it's just like you know you gotta see your crowd see you know feel it out and then you know from your first song Mm. you got once you got them hooked it's 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 pretty much you're good mm-hmm. you know what i mean so you just mm-hmm. take them wherever you want to go so i think yeah it's just it yeah <laughs> it's just you know what i mean it's I, I would say don't even think about it but just your energy your your mm-hmm. first selection you know what i mean and just feeding off of other people's energy mm-hmm. and that's what will take you to you know where you want to go and how you make them feel you know mm-hmm. what i mean Mm -hmm. kind of thing so i mean trust me it's it's worked for me but i i I know like you know when i i used to be so scared of just going on and you know it took me to to bomb out two times to just like really focus on what i'm going to do and how i'm going to perform you Mm -hmm. know what i mean so yeah Mm -hmm. you know so yeah 
there's a lot there's a lot to it there's a lot to it you know yeah, yeah man there, there's a real science to it uh there's a whole science to this thing and it's like it's something i like i try to explain to people like my mother or you know people who are on the outside i'm i'm like one of the i'm the only person in my family who does this kind of thing um so they don't get it but it is kind of interesting when you explain it and you realize really what does it mean for you it's more than just dancing and having a good time you know um it's that that experience of music when when you feel music as though it's just a whole experience yeah. uh, and it's a journey like you were saying it uh yeah. it it uncovers a whole new dimension for you man yeah it, it it's 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 funny because it is a journey it is an experience and and it doesn't hit a lot of people right you know yeah. it, it, to yeah. want to want to want to actually be in it to want to actually be a musician or artist or a dj or whatever it doesn't hit a lot of people you know it hits people in the sense of let's go out and club and listen to that cool shit but it, it's it's a creative thing and, and once you get that it's like it's like almost like a good drug like you want more and more and more mm -hmm. and you keep you keep filling yourself with it to to the to the point where you're in it there, you, there's no coming back you mm -hmm. know what i mean so you're just in it and you understand it and you know everything about it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's what music does to you you know what i mean so i mean could i could i don't i don't know what else i could have been like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. something that that I got that that itch and I got that bug and that bug is in me. So this is who I am to this to this to this day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm, you know, a musician, a producer, DJ. You know what I mean? An artist, a a creator, a creative person. And for me, it's just like I love being around creative people because that's all. You know, that's all we do is nerd out. You know what I mean? And talk uh, about yeah. like you know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> That's the best thing is to nerd out and just talk about music and, you know, everything like that. So, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. You know? <laughs> do you ever, yeah. um, do you ever like sit back and think about yourself creating music when you were younger? And all the time. Yeah. All the time. I, it's, it's funny because I go through my records and I'm like, oh, fuck, I use that. I use that for such and such. And I play the original and I'm like, oh, man, mm. this. But it, the funny thing about that, it just inspires me because it's just like, that's why I was inspired because this record made me, you know, feel so good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's certain records that you pull out that make you want to create that kind of, or let's say conducting things, you know what I mean? Like the, the vibe of that record was just like, wow, mm. that's why, why did I sample that? And, and you go back to it and it's like, that's the reason why, because these, the, again, it goes back to the music, the records, the foundation, they, they inspire you, inspire you to do cool shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you sample, sample it up the way you want to sample it and interpret it how you, interpreted on drum machine or logic or whatever you know what i'm saying so mm. that's yeah that's it's yeah it's crazy it's crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it, it must be really cool too to to have again like i, I keep going back to this because for me um i just think it's so incredible to to have that accomplishment of uh, first of all you know the success of the album that you created when when you were like 17 or 18 years old or whatever um mm -hmm. but just just like regardless of what the reception was just having that evidence or that mm -hmm. kind of time stamp of mm -hmm. where you were in your creative process at, at that mm -hmm. moment in time and at the same time like it's it's kind of more than just you as well it was where you were living and mm -hmm. what influences you had growing up you know you mm -hmm. you, you had um musicians in your family and you grew up listening to records and Mm -hmm. you know you were messing around with turntables etc mm -hmm. it's it's like the the amalgamation of all of that mm -hmm. inside a, a body of work mm -hmm. um that you've published and that mm -hmm. is you know physical and is worth a lot of money <laughs> you know props to you um, but it's just so cool you know it, uh, it's so cool and yeah. I, as well like you as a musician and as an artist mm -hmm. you know inevitably you have evolved so much since that time um yeah, yeah so i mean i mean it's 
again, it's just like, I'm still like, like right now I'm, I'm putting together like a record, but it, well, it's going to be like, it's going to be an album, but the album that I'm going to do is, is that I'm doing now that I'm working on now. It's, it's pretty much how I feel it. It's an expression. So it's not going to be like a time capsule of like 90 shit or whatever. It's mm. just like vibes of, just vibes like you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's just like they'll be they'll be actually like yo the, the roads on that are like how like just some real soulful cool shit like programming like how i would really program like you know what i mean like what i listen to now like you know what i mean like just certain type of elements that i'm surrounded by right now that's how i'm creating this record you mm -hmm. know that i'm doing right now so it's it's pretty much gonna be I don't know. It's just going to be an an emotion, an emotional roller coaster that people can fuck with because it's just like, yo, I feel that shit. Mm -hmm. But then I then then it takes you to a different place where it's just like, oh, like what is he sampling or who's playing? You know what I mean? Or is that a sample that he's you know playing? Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna have you like on that experience that trip. Like you know what I mean? And I don't know. I'm I I, I think that's what I'm I'm about right now is like I listen to a lot of like like fuck um it's it's just weird uh, one day one day we'll we'll nerd out and you'll be like oh shit you listen to that that shit is crazy like kind of thing you know what I mean so uh -huh, uh -huh. it's just like I, I nerd out on a lot of different shit you know what I mean and 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 the shit that I nerd out on is the shit that I, I kind of like want to like put people on a trip of how I create it now. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, you know, really crazy shit. You know what I mean? So, but it's really good shit. That's the thing. Like, you know, so, um, yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, is it new ground for you? I think it's new ground because I, I, I definitely want to add elements of, of 90 stuff, meaning like, lo-fi you know what i mean it has to be you know what i mean lo-fi kind of sounding like if i do sample i'm definitely gonna manipulate and make it really lo-fi with like cool ass program drums you know what i mean but i don't want it to be like you know something where it's just like oh like he thought really too hard to do this record you know what i mean then you're doing too much you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i just want it really simple but basic but you know just just vibey like you know what i mean mm -hmm. just like oh mm -hmm. shit like you know what i'm saying like when you hear a good record you're like oh god like you know like you know what i mean you're just like oh god this is so good yeah. you know or or if you watch movies and and you hear this one little particular song you're like you shazam the shit just to see what that song is that's mm -hmm. the kind of shit that i'm trying to make is this that feel good like oh shit is that a sample or you know who you know what i'm saying that kind of music mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, but still have like the integrity and the 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 I want to say the background like of where I came from, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Just elements. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But still inspiring, but still good. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So that's that's what I'm about because I'm always like, again, like I'm listening to music every single day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. Matter of fact, I'm going to put you onto this one uh, group, this group from London, England. They're called Salt. I don't know okay. if you, I don't know, S-A-U-L-T or S, Salt. Just look for, it's, yeah. And if you hear that kind of, you know, you'll understand where I'm coming from. They got a few okay. albums, but the albums are just like incredible. You know what okay. I mean? But it's just, it's just vibey shit. Like it, it, it's like, just, yeah, just check them out. Check them out. And you'll be like, oh shit. Okay, cool. Okay. I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you the link anyways. I'm going to send you the link after. Okay. So you get it. But yeah, just, just, yeah, just vi trippy vibey shit, but really cool shit. You mm. know? Yeah. Who, uh, what artist? today like that are active today uh do you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet i don't think i want to um to be honest with you i don't want to work with any artist i want to be be my own thing i want to just create music for 
people like you know mm-hmm. what i mean i want you, i want to you want to make it i got yeah it. i want to be the i want to be the person that inspires people you know yeah. what i mean with some cool ass shit you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so i don't really think i don't really think i want to work with any artists you know and if i did like want to work with somebody it, it wouldn't be it would probably be like one of those weird singers like you know what i mean like uh, era, you know what, you know what i'm saying like it would probably be like a, a jill scott because i have mm-hmm. an idea of how i want this melody to be sung or erica badu because mm-hmm. she's just like really vibey and trippy and she just does her own shit you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. that's the kind of shit i want to do like i don't i don't want to just like be like oh no i want to work work with all these upcoming and new guys or whatever because yeah. i'm about like trippy and different kind of element that people still fuck with today you know what i'm saying i get what you mean yeah and i mean like jill and and erica i feel like working with them it's it's yeah it's a collaboration but like they're gonna do their own thing on the track and and you'll have the space to do your own thing on the track and like exactly those kinds of um those kinds of artists linking up with those kinds of people uh Yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, I think that's um, even reaching that point where you realize when it comes to your own output and making something, mm-hmm. you know, you, you don't have to be working with anybody. You want, yeah. you, know, you yeah. want to do, to do the thing and make the thing and put it out and you don't it, have to, you don't need to, you don't feel like it, you want it, to. It, exactly. I get, if I you, get that. If, if I was like, you know, in my 20s and I was a teen, I would say, okay, yeah, I want to work with such and such and such and such. But it's, yeah. it's just, you get to the point where it's just like, they all sound amazing at what they do. And yeah, I love what they do, but I'm in my own zone where now I want to create this shit. So people that think like me and that feel the same energy as me can be able to say, okay, yeah, he did this kind of record. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, mm. that's kind of cool. Like, you know, so yeah, I'm 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 just about like making records that are just vibey and just you know give you that that zone space, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and make you feel a certain way, you know what I mean. Like there's this group, um, Bad Bad, um, not good, yeah, not bad, not good, yeah, 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 yeah. like shit like that, like or the mm-hmm. um, just just trippy shit, like you know what I mean, like just really you know music, you know what I mean. Yeah. Feel feel good, you know. You understand what I'm saying? Like, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's me nerding out right now on some, you know, what I mean, next level <laughs> shit. But that's what it is. Like, I feel shit like that. You know what I mean? And and yeah, I think that's what I want to get back, and that's that's what I'm um actually experimenting right now with my music. You know what I mean? So, it's gonna take me a little bit to do it, but once I get the first song and 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 mold it the way I want to do it, then it'll it'll set the trend for the other songs that I'm doing. You know what I mean? Because I'll 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 work on a beat and it'll be like, oh, this is cool. But in my mind, I know that's not the beat that I, you know, I want to present to the world. You know what I'm mm. saying? So it's just like I'm still experimenting on how I want to do it. And then again, it's like I can't really reach out to a lot of people because it's like, you know, what's going on in the pandemic. So I can't get like you know, a guitar player or a bass player to come over and, you know, replicate like shit that I hear on records or anything like that. So it's just like, right. you know, I got to work with what I have. And, you know, in the time being, it's just like, you know, I just listen to a lot of music, you know what I mean? And just be inspired by it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What's the last record that you listened to that made you feel very inspired? First thing that comes oh. to your mind. Oh, wow. Actually, hold on. Let me see. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably on hand. Yeah. This record. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, uh, this is a Fela Kute record. Okay. Fela Kute is like, oh, shit. Sorry. They, okay. Yeah. I'm like, it's, I can't see that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. I just didn't recognize the cover. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's. Shakara. Yeah. So this is, I, I like a lot of African stuff, and I, I, I mean, from since I was a kid, I, I've loved like a lot of African records. It's just like, 
it's just inspiring like especially Kalakuta like if you know his story and where he came from and all of this stuff and and then when you listen to his music and when you see the old videos and stuff like that it's mm-hmm. just really really it's hip hypnotizing kind of thing you know what I mean so yeah I think um that album alone is just like when you put it on you put your headphones on and you just play it and you just hear like all the the grooves and it just takes you to a different place you know what mm, i mean so okay that's that's why i like fella fella uh kute yeah mm. you know but i mean there's a lot of other records that you know do the same thing for me but it's this particular guy like it, it's just i don't know something mystic and spiritual about like fella it's just like you know what i mean it's just crazy you know what i mean yeah so, I we we have some uh, Fela Kuti music in our radio station, and I mm. always play it in the mornings. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I don't. I, I'm like waiting for someone to complain. Say, well, you always play the same things in yeah. the morning time. But yeah. I'm, I'm like, I don't care. Y'all need this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta, you <laughs> gotta is, throw some Fela in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, it just yeah. takes you. It just gives you the energy about it. Like, it's just crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you just yeah. have so many cool songs you know what i mean and then when you hear like the messages and you know just everything about it it's just like so dope like you know so yeah that's why i rock with um fella yeah you know yeah Yeah. and very influential too like he's he's kind of like james brown you know like you can't escape that kind of you can't escape his music you know it it, it touched a lot of artists across a lot of different genres you know definitely definitely Yeah. yeah definitely yeah, he's he's that's the dude. That's the dude right there, fella. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. He's the man. Um, mm-hmm. what do you think has uh been the main ingredient for the trajectory of your career? You know, your, your success, your um, the the uh, quality of your work. Like, what what has it been about you, musical, or maybe your something about your personality, or what is what is it? Um, I think it's, I think it's persistence and, uh, I just, I just keep in my mind that I need to do this. You know what I mean? Like, I just stay on it. Like, you know, again, it's just like, if you put your mind to something Mm -hmm. and you know what you want to do, just, you just do it. You have a vision, you have a dream, you have an idea. And it's just like, if I stick with this, you know what I mean? And I'm very adamant and i'm and and i can convince other people that this is the shit then that's what happens it will be the shit you mm-hmm. know what i mean mm-hmm. so i think persistence is is very important and believing in yourself mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. and believing in what you can do you yeah. know what i mean yeah. that's very important if you if you can do all of those things then yeah you'll definitely be successful you know Mm -hmm. what i mean it doesn't matter if somebody says oh well your djing sucks you know what i mean that's fine that's what you think you know what i'm saying that's but if you know you have other people like yo you did good that boosts like how you feel and 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 it it inspires you to actually okay i'm gonna do better i'm gonna do this you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and you know that's what gives you that drive like you know what i mean i don't think the you know as older as i get i think you know i get more like okay i feel seasoned but at the same time now i know what i want to do and how i want to do things you know what i mean when you're younger it's just like you you just want to get it done you want to fucking be the hottest you want people to know who the fuck you are and da, da, da. but i'm just like you know I can I can now say that I've learned a lot being in the industry and going through all the trials and tribulations and the, the ups and downs. You know, I could say now it's like okay, cool. Like you know, now I get all of it. I've been through all it all. Now I get to do it how I want to do it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we're in the best time right now in terms of the social platforms that we have. You know what I mean? It's not like now I have to go and fucking shop my shit to like, you know, Universal or whatever. Fuck those guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can go to any social platform and present my shit and I can do it on social media. And as long as your shit sounds legit, 
and I say legit, meaning you got to be legit. You can't be doing shit that you're trying to be like other people. It's got to come from the heart. Mm-hmm. And that's when people are able to say, I fuck with you mm-hmm. because you, you came from the soul and the heart. And that's why I like, you know, one of, one of my favorite artists today right now is her. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because yeah. you feel like, you know, I was up on her like so, like a couple of years ago. And I was like, yo, this girl is fucking crazy. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then you hear more and it's like, yeah, like, you know what I mean? So you understand, like, it's just, it's just soulful. Like it, it, if it comes from the heart then, and it's for real, then you'll, you'll relay that message to people. And that's when people will be like, yo, this is legit. I fuck with it. This is what I'm following. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And I tell people, you know, again, like, they're like, you know, I can have like, like, you know, a hundred million followers, but I don't do that shit because mm-hmm. I want people who follow me. It's organic. And what I present on my, 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 my page is just me being me. Mm-hmm. You're kind of like taking in like who I am. I, I, I go and hang out with my, my girl that takes pictures. Boom. She's, you know, Yo, okay. What are you doing? Nothing. Oh, well, Anna, I'm going to come down. All right, I'll shoot. Take a couple of photos. You know, I, sometimes I take people on my journeys. If I travel like to, you know, wherever in the world, like I take them with me and I'm like, this is what I'm doing. You know, da da da, and just 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 the vibe. I, I I like to share like things that are relevant to, you know, my experiences, and that's what I do. Like I, I I'm not, you know, hungry for followers or you know chasing followers or whatever. It's just I want people to follow me to be on my journey and see what my journey is. It might not be every day, you know what I mean? I might post something, you know, once every two months or whatever, but <laughs> at least, you know, I'm posting something that I've experienced, you know what I mean? And that's that's what you get, like, if you're following me, you know what I mean? You just follow mm-hmm. K-Cut and, you know, we're going to have some fun. I might throw some music. I might I might be live, you know, which a lot of people keep saying, you should be live DJing. I'm like, yeah, I have the setup to do it. But, you know, again, being a nervous guy, but again, it's just me, you know what I mean? One day I might just do it. I might just pop on and, you know, play a couple of soul records and be like, yeah, and talk about it, you know what I mean? And that's just me. Like, I, I like, you know, being spontaneous with what I do, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I, I couldn't be, you know, somebody who's constantly engaging with people online and, um, mm-hmm you know, doing the work on there, like with followers and all this, like, I, I couldn't do that myself either. It, yeah, it's, I, it's too distracting. You know what I mean? It, it's, it, the funny thing about that, it's just, uh, you know, you have people that are good at it and you yeah. have people that that's a job. This is not a job for me. You know no. what I'm saying? No. I, I'm, I, I like that I have low followers and in, and I don't, want to promote that i'm that kind of dude like i'm just like i want to be the guy that's like oh that's a cool vibey dude you Mm -hmm. know what i mean i fuck with him because of that like you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like you know there might be a day like you know when the whole um you know floyd thing went down like i felt the way and i was just like you know what i'm gonna post this song and I'm going to do that because I just felt the way when, you know, there was a girl that fell off. Um, the, the, they say that she fell off the roof or whatever the case may be, you know, yeah. shit, shit like that. Like, you know, yeah. I felt angry, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it was just like, I'll post something because this is my energy right now. I do things yeah. all, all because of my energy, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. And that's why I do it. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. That's that's what that's why I, that's why I post. I just post because I might be feeling a certain way. I might be feeling sad, and I might, you know, post a song or whatever. You know what I mean? And that's just me. You know, I I could be happy, and you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hear you, man. Yeah. I hear you. Like it yeah. it it kind of goes back to um, something you were making me think about when we were talking about uh, fuck what you think, and I was having this conversation with a friend last night. Um, you know. You know, there, there's that whole cliche about, you know, if you don't have any haters, you know, doing it right. Or if you don't have haters, you got to figure out how to get some. And like, yeah. that's true. That's, a, that's totally true. But at the same time, people are going to hate on you for not doing what they expect you to do, you know, for yeah. not being who they expect you to be, and especially as an artist and even as a DJ. Like, I feel that sometimes, you know. Yeah, I mean, you're always going to have somebody that 
doesn't like you in the industry or doesn't feel you know what i mean yeah you know what you're doing it's 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 just human nature you know what i mean mm -hmm. you're gonna you can be the greatest person and give out the greatest vibe but there's always going to be that one person that's like mm, i don't like you mm -hmm. and that's just the way it is like you can't get away from that so that i mean fine. it's fuck what you think yes do you, do you and it's just like you shine regardless you're gonna shine mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, you energy is, I, I go back to that because it's, energy is everything. You give out yeah. the right energy and that's when you get back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what you want. You know, you want to have the people who are, like you're saying, you want to have people following you who are actually into what you're, what you're doing. Yeah, it's, you know? it's, it's organic. I, 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 I want everything to do with art being organic. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's why I, I do the things that I do. And, you know, like I do delete people, you know, not, you know, intentionally, but I, I do delete people because when I look at their stuff and I see the energy that they reflect, it's mm -hmm. not something that, you know, I want on my page. Like, you know what I mean? Or I yeah. want people to be following me with that bullshit. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. you know, and then again, like, you know, I still know people from, you know, the States or whatever that probably do have that fucked up energy, but I'm like, fuck, what if I, you know, I don't want to insult them. So I don't want to delete them. So I just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know there are some people who you're just like, yeah, I, 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 you, they don't know. It's like, I do want to delete your ass, but you know, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah I, I know yeah. <laughs> but that is that is so damn important especially now like just protecting your your vibe and your energy because yeah. creatively again like you need you need to be in a safe zone yeah you know in a comfortable zone energy yeah. wise to create yeah. you yeah. need to be even like in your head you need to be seeing the right kinds of stimulations yeah. you know yeah. And I, again, even in my studio, like I, I, it's like a really, um, it's a, it's a cool small space, but it's really organic. Like, and it's just like, like I have like a chair that I have my feet up, like Russell Simmons, and you know what I mean. I could swirl around and just look at little <laughs> things in the studio, like you know, yeah. and just like yeah. masks and just things to give you that you know and i burn i burn sage and incense and and my, in my it's in my house you know what i mean but it's yeah. it's in, you know it's just vibey little shit like you know what i mean like i said like i could have been like um like a little hipster like like <laughs> little hippie kid but you know that's mm -hmm. that's just my vibes like you know you know what i mean that's that's what i like that's the shit that inspires me and that's that's what gives me you know good energy you know to, mm. to give out good energy you know what i mean you gotta have good energy to give give out good energy you know what i mean so yeah that's yeah. where it starts from right so that's the whole thing you know can i ask what your sign is i'm a leo my birthday just passed oh happy yeah. happy birthday when was your birthday the 25th the 25th so like of july two it days after yeah, yeah. And, and then also right after the the main source anniversary right yep yep Amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's very Main source, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And it didn't dawn to me until like a couple of years ago. I'm like, wait a minute. Because I, I, I saw people like, oh, main source, they're posting a lot of main source shit. And I'm like, fuck, that's right. We the 23rd and then I'm the 25th. Mm -hmm. And then after me is um Selassie. Selassie, I believe, is the 27th or the 28th. Wow. Right? So wow. yeah, it's crazy. There's a whole bunch of lines in the place. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I mean, you know. Again, like it, it you know, it, it's it's a it's a it's a strong. I I think it's a strong sign because it shows, you know, that you're you're actually strong as a human. Mm. You know what I mean? And you're you're not really. I mean, you can be vulnerable, but but you're strong in terms of how you you know go about things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what I think my sign is. It's it's a lion. It's a Leo. It's it, you got to be a leader. You got to be somebody that that shows. You know what I mean. And mm -hmm. that's that's why I like the. I'm glad I'm a Leo. I like the sign. I think it's cool. That's good. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. So that makes me think of the um. What's that Bob James album that that is sampled on? on the oh no. Um. Hold on. The cover of it has like that brass lion. Let me see. 
now you're you're making me dig this out oh yeah good, good. there yes yes what's it yeah. called again it's called one so it's bob mm-hmm. james one and uh bob james two i think i think it is mm. yeah bob james two this is what mighty grabs on it mm. yeah that's what Mardi Gras on it. You know? mm. Yeah, but yeah, the lion. The lion is, I think it represents like a, um, like really strong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, go back to like, um, what is that um, movie? Where where the girl had the little dog and shit. And, you know, uh, what was it? I don't know. There anyways, a lion I, in it? Yeah, there was a lion in it. I, 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 well, oh, there, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Wizard of yeah. Oz. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like the strength, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the lion has the strength and he's like that, you know, kind of dude. You know what I mean? So that's, that's yeah, that's mm. that's why I think this symbol is so, like, really dope. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a Pisces. That is um it's a fish. It? Yeah, I know, but when is that? Is that that's not September? No, that's in July. No. That's um uh it's like February, March. Okay. Yeah, February, March. Okay. So creatively, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's very like all up in the air and uh or more in the water and uh-huh. you know, very abstract thinking and um you know intuition and, and things like that. everything is very fluid uh-huh. uh, we can just be kind of emotional sometimes uh-huh. <laughs> very sensitive that's, that's what's kind of yeah. more what it is very sensitive oh, that's crazy yeah. yeah and 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 yeah i, I feel that musically you know i feel sensitive yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, no i think signs are like 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 when you really astrology and all that shit like a lot of people are into that shit but i think so, for what it's worth like it does mean something yeah. and it does it does tell you about like a lot of people sometimes because you're born on a certain time when that was you know what i mean mm-hmm. it was filtering right so yes oh yes but sorry cool no it's kind of cool yeah do you know of um this is something that i like to do i, I like mm-hmm. to learn about what albums came out on my birthday or like my year of birth, either like yeah. the day I was born or around the time that I was yeah. born. Yeah. And um, I, I just looked up one the other day that actually came out on my exact birthday. Uh, and uh, I, I forget what it was. Um, you said February, right? Well, my birthday's in March. March March, 20th. okay, March, okay, okay. Yeah. Spring break? Spring break. <laughs> <laughs> Usually on the cusp at the beginning or at the end. So I never got a chance to, you know, while out or anything on my birthday. Yeah. But yeah. it's fine. That that came yeah. later on, you know. Mm-hmm. I hear you. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. So the the album you were saying that that was you liked to on your birthday. I like to see what was like musically what was out mm-hmm. during the year I was born. Because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I think, like, what, why am I into the music that I'm into? Right. Especially because. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do, do you know of any albums that came out in, or do you have any, like, albums that you really like that you know came out in the same year that you were born or around the time that you were born? Do you ever look into dates and things like that? I don't, I don't think I have any albums specifically, uh-huh. but I think around the date of my birth there was a lot of like dope movement and people um that were creating the music that i enjoy now mm-hmm. were were really like buzzing you know what i mean and, and bob marley would probably probably be one of them mm-hmm. um james brown like a lot of the soul records like you know mm-hmm. what i mean like i see like you know we're in the 70s around 71 you know what i mean so it's a lot of cool shit that was like buzzing and i think that was the era where shit was like really getting funky you know what i mean for those Mm. artists you know what i mean and a lot of good stuff was coming out so i think not i don't i I don't have an album per se but artist wise yeah there was a lot of nice stuff coming out you know Mm. during that time and i think um i think you know for me i think that's you know, 
I think that's why I'm here because a lot of that cool stuff was coming out. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm grateful to that, you know, yeah. you know, when people say like, uh, Oh, you're here because your mom was listening to Barry White. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that uh-huh, it's, it's uh-huh. like, we're, it's, it's like one of those times where it's just like a lot of cool stuff. And, you know, I get like weird, like, you know, um, dreams in terms of like what that era was and you know that's why i watch a lot of documentaries too in terms of like the vibe wise and i watch a lot of like like black exploit uh, exploitation movies like you know um shaft and the freaking um the big payback and you know sweep back and all that stuff and it's just like you want to see what they were listening to and you mm-hmm. want to see how they were dressed you want to see what the cars look like you want to see what the streets look like you know what i mean mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah it's just it's just like one of those vibes where you it just wants you just want to take it back you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um there's this other good one that i that i've watched because i go to london england a lot and so and i have family out there too so um the one one of the movies that um that i watch is it's called babylon you got to watch that movie. It's really, it's a throw. It's, it's, in, it's done in the eighties and it shows you what England was like. And it tells you, uh, it, it just, it's basically like what the sound crews were doing, like, because there was a lot of West Indians that migrated to London at that time and then migrated to Canada, like in the seventies and the kids that were born and growing up in the eighties and how would, they were doing it, you know, within that times in terms of music and DJing and all of this shit. It's incredible, mm. an incredible movie. So um, yeah, if you could find that movie, I would say watch that movie and you'll be like, hey, that was a fucking crazy movie. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. And right. then uh, there's another movie called um, Style Wars. And it's basically a that. movie. Yeah, that's mm. an incredible movie. Mm. And the funny thing about that is those artists in that movie, I I actually grew up with one of those artists because I went to school in Glendale near a lot where they were doing graffiti because I grew up as a graffiti artist too, right? So mm. it was Is The Wiz. Um, a friend mm. of mine, a friend of mine, he's he's another, he was friends of Is The Wiz. And when I started writing graffiti, he was like, yo, I got this guy Is The Wiz that, that will write in your black book. And I actually had my black book with his actual is the whiz um art in it and uh, unfortunately it's been lost but mm. it was it would have been something that was if i kept that to this day it would have been something that i would have probably framed you yeah. know what i mean because he he passed away but um it's crazy but that movie again it just kind of takes you back like to say like you know if you weren't there then you could actually physically be there because you could see it within that movie. And mm-hmm. that's why that movie was such a great movie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Star Wars, you know, and that's why I'm saying with the seventies movies, like, you know, the black Caesars and all of that, I wasn't, I wasn't there, but it was just like something in the seventies that, you know, it would have been cool to actually just time machine that shit back real quick and just mm-hmm. check out, you know, and just vibe, vibe out with those people kind mm-hmm. of thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, man, like, like that's yeah, that's that's my shit. I'm I like really trippy with stuff like that. I love that. I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like, I, and especially with the older older films, like from the '70s and '80s, and just art in general. I found like I, I just find that people from, you know, I, I I'm not even comparing because I mm-hmm. I spend a lot of my time uh, doing research on mm-hmm. or listening to music or just consuming work from you know eras from before I was born Um, that's just kind of what really touches me a lot you know and and what I vibe with a lot Uh, and I find that there was just so much even in like the cinematography of the movie yeah Yeah. uh, Yeah. it's it's again yeah it's crazy mind-bending yeah but that's what that's what I was talking about um all this time it goes back to being a creative person creative people love stuff like that it's just like Mm. it just touches you in a way that you know people that are not creative won't get it you see what i'm saying yeah 
And that's why a lot of creative people attract creative people because it's just like your minds are going and you're, you know, you be mm -hmm. able to connect and understand, like, you know what I mean? It's some Martian shit talking like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Like, yes. yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, but it's crazy, you know? That's what I really liked about the uh, Toronto Collective and Cratery. And uh -huh. like, I met those guys and um, went down to... Uh, live convention I think uh -huh. it was last year and that was kind of my first introduction to the the group and the people oh did you there. go yeah yeah that was pretty i was there i was there last year yeah last yeah. year there were the where, where we're buying records and stuff right yes yeah, yeah I, was, I was there yeah yeah yeah. Oh, I, dope. I, that was my second year of going there because i always go with um um mr attic from grassroots mm. we we go down there and it's just like I go there and I'm like, and then I, I, I should stay a little longer and go to the other stuff, you know, attached yeah. to it. But yeah. I just go down there and get records and I'm like, all right, cool. I'm out. I'm happy. Bye. Yeah. Cause it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Last, last year there was, um, uh, DJ Spina. Mm -hmm. Um, what's, uh, what's the Brazilian fellow's name? I know him too. Yeah. I, I met him That's, too. Yeah. I, yeah. I met him. I met him. I know Spina from, from New York. So we were, I was chatting with all those guys and yeah. it's like, okay guys, we're going to do this tonight. And I'm like, uh, that's where I bail out. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, well, why I'm did you come? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I should, I should, I should have like the, the next time, the next time. But, um, I got a, I, I, there's a lot of things that I'm going to be doing for the new year as well. So I will definitely be involved and I'll definitely be more around in terms of like presence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the next live convention too. I'll definitely be there for sure. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. It, it's a lot, man. But it's really yeah. good. And yeah. like, I was just so impressed, and mm. even more so impressed. So kind of um, like awestruck by yeah. just the the energy and the vibe. Like everybody who was there. Mm -hmm. um, it's a feel good. It, it felt, yeah, yeah, you yeah. felt so good. You felt so comfortable and so yeah. at home and people were, uh, every, like just even like the layout of the place and the vibe it you got from people, everyone was just creative. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't fake. No, no. You know what I mean? And that's what I mean. Like when you go to like uh, a industry party, which is like, you know, and then when you go to like, uh, like a, a Soho party, you know what I mean? Like mm. the different energies, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, for, if you go to the Soho party, you're going to come home alive. If you know, if you go to the industry party, there's, you know, a 90% chance some shit might pop off. You know what mm. I mean? So, mm. you know, it's, it's just one of those things, you know what I mean? Because, you know, people that go to like, like cool parties, that, like I said, they don't want to, they don't want anything but to drink, smoke and have fun and listen to music. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you, industry party, that's why I tell people there's a huge difference. When you go to industry party, you know, there's somebody there that somebody's looking for. And you know, there's people there yeah. that just want to look for a drink or, you know, a baka, you know what I mean? Mm. And I'm not in, uh, you know what I mean? I don't like any of that. I just want to be around cool people and we listen to music and that's it. You know what I mean? I, I'm not into drama and all this other extra shit that other people are looking for. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's why I'm saying like that vibe at um, the, uh, tr the, the, the the Toronto Live thing mm -hmm. where RC's, RC's function, that's what it's about. It's about, you know, awareness. It's about like, you know, DJs coming together and, you know, he could be, you know, you, you don't even have to know Spinner and you could be like, yo, DJ yeah, Spinner, he'll, he'll turn around and be like, yo, what's up, da, da, da. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's that kind of cool shit that people are like, oh, shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I mess with that. And that's what you want. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's, that's what I'm saying. We were talking about it earlier. There should be more of that because mm -hmm. people want that. You know what I mean? People mm -hmm. want to be around that. You know what I mean? And that's good energies. You know what I mean? Very good energies. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You feel like you found your peoples. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's hard to feel. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's hard to feel like. But when you feel that way or when you enter a space where you feel like that, like I've, I used to live in Montreal, um, 
And I was in Montreal for like six years. And I just came back to London a year uh-huh. ago. Uh-huh. And they had these, when I was in Montreal, you know, I got, that's, that's actually where I became very much, you know, discovering really what was my, my flavor in music and what, what did I love about it? And I was going to a lot of live shows and, and a lot of uh, live and organic jam sessions. Right. And, you know, I would go to those things by myself, mm-hmm. not know anybody there. Um, and I'd go like it, it was a weekly thing. So I'd go every week and, you know, meet people and see someone that I kind of knew and, you know, oh, shit, you know, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. And uh, but I could even go and not speak to anybody, not interact with anybody and just dance and vibe out and feel mm-hmm. so like around love. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's what I mean. You know, like these kind of parties are like almost, you know, you bring it back to like the the 60s and the 70s where it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, the the friggin like trippy, the friggin peace and love, you know, <laughs> crap that they were dealing with like back then. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, it's it, it was a movement, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they had those those they had their industry kind of parties back then too. And then they have their like, Oh, peaceful love. And like, you know, we're going to listen to Jimmy and all this shit. You know what I mean? That kind of shit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there, everything like, again, it's like all it's, it's so full circle because you have your, your, your different genres of, you know, where to go and what kind of music and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing here, but it's just like, you know, where to find it and how to find it and how to keep it alive, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I mean, we are trying, me and a couple of DJ friends of mine um, are trying to create this community here in London because there isn't one, you know what I mean? There's not like yeah. one that exists. That's crazy. Um, and it has to do with the size of the city. It has to do with the, but like for me with these jam sessions, like part of that, I think which made it so great was that there was like a brass house band. Like there was a band there. Uh Um, And I don't know in Uh New York city, if you know the jam, like there are a bunch of jams in New York. I don't know any in Toronto. Uh, Uh I can't think of any in Toronto, but in New York, there's like the lesson, which I don't know if you know of. No, I don't. I mean, it's just like, you got a bunch of jazz musicians, you got a bunch of MCs, you got uh-huh. a bunch of people who bring their own instruments, whatever the hell they play. Uh-huh. They switch off on stage. Uh-huh. Do you know Soul in the Horn? Yes, of course. My boy does that. Yeah. Oh, who's your yeah. boy? It's, um, um, <laughs> why Is am it I? Deep Prosper? Why? Yeah, Deep Prosper. That's my boy. So yeah. that shit, okay, I was supposed to it, go. <laughs> he does it with Natasha, Natasha Davis. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Deep Prosper, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. My, that's my guy. Like I was supposed to DJ for um I was supposed to DJ for one of his parties when I was down there in New York, but I had to leave the next day. So I was like, you know, prosper, I can't do it. Mm. But, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing, man. Like I still have not been to a Soul in the Horn party, and I've been following that shit for years. Crazy. Okay, listen, <laughs> I know it looks yeah. crazy, and yeah, I love crazy. what Natasha does. Like she's yeah. she's one of my idols, man. Yeah. She's yeah. one of the people who inspired me like yeah. the most to start DJing. Yeah. See, but that's the thing. Like, see, D Prosper pulls it off over there. Yeah. We got to be able to <laughs> pull it yeah. off here because yeah. that's what, that's what Toronto is lacking more like soul in the horns. You know what I mean? And so yeah. is, is there the community there to do that? Cause in yeah, London, there, there is, there sure is. As hell is not, there's like maybe five or 10 of us. I mean, I mean, but, I wonder if in Toronto there's there's people who would be there is I mean week and everything there is you, mm. you the thing about it you got to do it like you know you got to do it like a like a monthly and then you know yeah. introduce it but yeah. it's it's a thing like you know I would say like like scratch bastard he could bring out like you know that kind of yeah you know what I mean that element yeah. RC RC could bring that out too yeah you know what I mean now yeah. that he's been doing the, the conventions, but it's a thing where they're, they're, the people are there, but you gotta, it's like, maybe you gotta click up with the right people to bring that vibe, you know what I mean? And that's for me, like, if I, if I was to say, okay, cool, K-Cut's gonna do this, I don't know how people show up, but if I said, okay, I'm gonna do it in conjunction with RC, then I know that because RC's already, you know, got his following with the cratery and, mm-hmm. you know, and, 
you know, and those are the people that, and me and Arcee spoke about it too. Like I said, yo, I want to kind of do something and we should just do it together kind of thing. And, and he's, he's been doing it. You know what mm. I mean? Mm. So it's just like, if you're going to do something like that, you should do it in conjunction with people like that. So they get to, they know your name. They, you start to brand what you're trying to do. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then you create that kind of following. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that would be, I mean, for me, like I thought about that would be the smart way to do it. If I'm going to do a party, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to click up with somebody that, that I know that already been doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can, you know, bring my, element to this thing now you know what i'm saying yeah. so that, that's all it is is just you, you want to bring your element you gotta you know definitely um force you force yourself with somebody that you know that can do it with you and that has that kind of you know vibe yeah and i really hope that for toronto man because i i believe that there are people there who would show up and help yeah. keep something like that going yeah the, i'm just like why isn't it happening right right now <laughs> why yeah, hasn't it happened yet the, there there is but you know i i just think like toronto's a weird place mm. it's 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 weird in the sense where <sighs> you could find a lot of that on you know there's there's promoters you know what i mean there's the, the so-called industry promoters and then there there's the the ink crowd you know what i mean the tastemakers you know what mm. i mean and there's tastemakers and then then you have the industry promoters and it's just like i don't know it's uh, it's a weird scene man like you know even for me it's just like you know when i started you know doing stuff at cold tea it was just like all right i see who the tastemakers are and i see what you know these are like influencers that are influencing like you know cool shit you know what i mean but it's just you got to be around those people like all the time and i don't have time to be around people like that all the time because i got a life you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and i got music to make so you know i can't be out like you know 24 7 you know all day you know trying to be a tastemaker i gotta be you know <laughs> you know, in a zone and creating music, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's, it, it, it could be like a balance where you could just balance it. You know what I mean? But again, like for me, like I said, I'm just like, I like to be, you know, in the lab and just creating and just be in my own space, you know, cooking mm -hmm. up some shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, so, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why I kind of stopped DJing and, and because then it was just like, I started DJing so much that, like one one club saw me DJ and then they're like, yo, we got to get him. He was dope. He was dope. And then it's like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll go and DJ. And it's like you're filtered and you're all over the place. And it's mm. just like you kind of like kind of like tarnish your brand because you're not that mystic, cool guy anymore. You're like the guy that was here, here, here and there. So, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? That's why yeah. I, I, I don't like if I DJ, it's going to be something special and it's got to be a vibe that I really want to rock with. You know what I mean? I don't care how much money you want to pay me. Yeah. It's just got to be, you know, special. And it's got to be, you know what I mean? I'm not going to do like what I did the, the last, you know, six years, you know, DJing all over the place. Because then then you kind of like, like I said, you kind of like tarnish like the, the mystique of that person. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because you see him all the time DJing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's, it's like, oh, I could catch him here. Oh, I missed him last month. Oh, he's going to be here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nah. <laughs> But you would do like your own event, let's say, if it was like a monthly thing. I would, I would, do, I would, I would do my own event. Um, I would probably do a monthly or every two months. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Depending on depending on how hungry the people are. If it's if if the first one turned off, turned turned out to be like fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then it's like okay, cool. I'll do it in the next two months. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's only the only reason why I say do it in the next two months, because if you made a great impression on that first one, you know what I mean? Then you reintroduce that shit in the next two months, then the per the people that came out are gonna tell their other friends and their other friends and their other friends and they're gonna be like, yo, we gotta go to that party. It's fucking mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. And then and then you when you do that within that two months and you show out again. You do it, you know what I mean? You start building up, you start building up that vibe. You start building up that, like, that, 
that thing that people are like, yo, we got to hit that. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's, that, it's that sort of thing. Like, I'm, I like to build vibes. You know what I mean? And when you build the right vibe, then that's when you start to get people to follow you. And, and, and that's when people rock with you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because you, you created something that, you know, organically, and you created it where people feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's 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 how I work, mm. you know. Mm. And even with music, like you know, music is just like you start off with one thing and you create this thing, and you could see it turning into so many different things. You know what I mean? And and it's just it's all vibes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. So yeah, I want to f- I want to um, learn through experience. Mm-hmm. But I'm. I want to also know how you would describe yourself in this way. But what's your vibe as a DJ? Um, Musically, my vibes would be like, okay, <laughs> it's 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 strange because um, I like a lot of. I like a lot of everything, but mm-hmm. if I if I was to do a party tomorrow, how I would start the pace, or you know, how I would set the um, the um, the tone. Yeah, the tone. I would play Talking Heads. I would play Gary Newman. You know what I mean? Shit like that. And because I I, I like a lot of the retro '80s stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that stuff is just like, you know it sets kind of like a, a certain kind of like cool, you know, tone to what you're, you're going to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and from, I, I think like, yeah, like I like retro, like I like, you know, eighties. I like, you know, throwing in like 90 shit. And then, and then I like, you know, like out of the, out of the, the, like, just crazy shit like you know what i mean like i would play like some new stuff but it won't be like it it will it won't be like trap it will be like s- different stuff that's like retro shit you know what i mean yeah like some of that new r&b or some house music like some of that stuff is yeah is getting really ahead man like yeah even really even cool shit. even house music like I, yeah. I i play all of that stuff you know what i mean i think yeah. that's that's the vibe like and especially if you if you have the right house music not like yes yeah you know what i mean like a hundred percent like the yeah yeah the, yeah I, the deeper deeper yeah house and yeah yeah that's the stuff that i play i don't play like all of the 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 crazy crazy stuff i play the vibey stuff where it's like oh yeah. shit like yeah you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's the stuff i play you know mm-hmm. and then it, it's like you blend that stuff with like the retro like the trap mm-hmm. the 90s and you know like and that's what makes a good party mm-hmm. you know what i mean you can't fucking trap all night mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. you can't you gotta you gotta have diversity in what you're doing you know what i mean and and mm-hmm. dj mm-hmm. and that's what makes you know that's what makes you stand out as a DJ and that's what separates you from, you know, everything else. You know what I mean? How you look, how you present yourself, how you, what you play, how you do it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Your, how you come across, like, you know what I mean? Everything that plays a part of being a DJ mm-hmm. and being, you know what I mean? So, you know, I look at all of that, you know, and that's, that's what I stand by. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's a, that's what I think my vibe is as, you know, a DJ. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. This is a very, you know, um, I'm not going to say eccentric to the point where I'm so like eccentric. I'm not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, no, I know what you mean. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, but I will be the dude that would be like eccentric to the point where you know, if if I'm allowed to to burn like incense where I'm DJing, then I'll do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's what I do, and that yeah. all that does for me is just like, it just it just it's it's one of those things where it's just like you do that. I've done that a, a few times, and people are like, "Yo, vibes are vibes are already dope." Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like you got them right there. It's like, oh fuck, what the fuck? Like oh yeah. shit, 
You know what I mean? That's that's how I that's how I am. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm that dude. You know? I, I I started to do that too, like the last couple DJ sets I did, even like the live streams, you know? Like I, I have to burn sage. Yeah. And I have to burn into like I got a little pack that yeah. I bring with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I even like, you know, might bring a crystal or, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh because because like my vibe as a DJ is just having that, um, bringing that catharsis, you know, that, yeah, that yeah. spiritual experience, yeah. what type of music it is. It, it could be some like, it could even be, see, this is the thing that is so important for DJs that you, when, if you are good with timing, mm -hmm. not only when you're mixing records, but when you play a certain record, when you introduce a certain sound mm -hmm. uh, or a certain beat, um, you could be playing like, gangster rap you mm -hmm. know and that shit is it hits different mm -hmm. it's funny that you say um timing and stuff because i think like like for me djing like me actually djing and and me playing like i don't think like it's it's i don't think like i'm the best like mixer you know what i mean because like no, there's so many like it's numbers and you're just like okay mm. four bars after that you got to make sure that you yeah. hit it with you know you're on time and all that shit so yes yes it's, yes it's, it's like you know what i mean that's that's yeah. always been like the confusing shit for me so <laughs> i think it's just how i bring in a record and how i transition the record yeah. and how you do it how you set it up you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. that's what I do. I set up a lot of records. So I would say, okay, cool. I might say I might I might play a record like um Biggie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the ten carat commandments and then boom, play something yes. else. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. That's how it that's how it, you know what I mean? I, I set shit up. So I, I surprise people on how I play and I and I actually choreograph how I do shit when I, when I play it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that way it's more entertaining, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and I don't have to be like, Oh fuck. Well, you know, I got a fucking like four bars, eight bars. And, you know what I mean? Then I start to, you know what I mean? Sometimes I, 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 I do a mix where it's like, Oh fuck, I did it tonight. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But there's other nights where I'm like, Oh fuck that. I'm just going to like choreograph this shit and make, make sure that it's like kind of seamless and then throw my little bells or horns or whatever. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But but that's how I do it. I, I, I think, yeah, the, the play and how you play it and how you set it up, and especially where you, how you get the, the crowd to a point where they're like, oh, shit, da, 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 da. and then next thing you know, you set it up with like, boom, you go there and they're like, oh, because that's what, <laughs> honestly, that's my favorite thing that I do when I DJ. And, and I found that it works where I get like people like screaming i swear to you i get people like oh shit and mm -hmm. the whole crowd is like like yelling and <laughs> i like that because it, it just mm -hmm. like it gets me pumped up because i'm like all right fuck now i know you know how to do things this is yeah. it's setups like you, yeah yeah you gotta, it's 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 called like i call it party rocking and that was one of the things i was going to talk about like on on the the film hey dj how to party rock you know what i mean like you got to know how to party rock and you got to like if you're DJing for parties, you got to know how to party rock because mm -hmm. people are there to party and you got to make sure that you get them every time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to know what, how to set it up. You got to know how to play it and mm -hmm. you got to know when to cut it off. You know what I mean? Because there's sometimes DJs will play records for like four minutes and you're like, dude, you don't need to play a record for four minutes and shit. Yeah. Just play it to the, you know, you, if you can decide from if you, either you want to let it go from after the second verse or if you want to let it go after the first chorus right. and then pop in something else, you know what I mean? Right. Right. And I don't like to play records so long. I, I'll probably play a record for like a minute and a half to the most and then go to the next one. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So when I plan a records or a party, I'm, I might just set it up for the night, like a hundred songs, but then I ha I'll have like, 25 songs that i might just throw in there songs that i really really like you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it, it, you know i i that's how i i when i when i dj how i plan my things you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i i have a, a guide and you know nine times out of ten i don't follow the guide you know what i mean i started with the guide and the next thing you know i'm off to another world 100 you know I mean? so, <laughs> yeah because yeah. like i was saying it it depends even on your own mood like as as the yeah. dj that that might shift if you yeah. Mm -hmm. You have songs that you planned the night before or whatever, then time comes for the event. 
yeah. you're just like, you know what, this, th this is my vibe right now. Yeah. And you know, you test it out and you try it and yeah. there's a good yeah. reaction. You're like, okay, I'm going to yeah. ride this wave now. Yeah. It's funny because I played the AGO and it was the first time I played the AGO. It was like, I think it was two years ago. And it was, I was so nervous about playing it because it was just like, you know, they had different DJs going on and I'm like, oh fuck. You know, I know a lot of people are like anticipating this K-Cut dude or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck. So, you know, I, I went in there and like, I had one, like exactly like you said, I had one idea how I was going to play, but then I was like, no, this is not going to work. So then I started mm -hmm. just freestyling and building that shit up to the point where people are like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean? And then I played house music. I played that soulful house music stuff. I played like retro shit. And then I played like, you know, this common stuff that everybody knows. And then I, did that. Then I hit them with some trap. And it was just like, mm -hmm. it was a good party. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's just like, yeah, you go in there with a plan and sometimes the plan might not work out, but then you got to freestyle and that's when you're nervous as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So you just, you just, you just, you know, you just go in and, and you just do you, you know what I mean? And just be that DJ, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think, I think that's the best thing that you could do. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love DJing. It makes yeah. me want to like, you know, do a set. Yeah. 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 Right yeah. now. I, yeah, love sure. I love it. Trust me, I have my, my set here. All it's, My set is always set up here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all ready to go. Like, and it's incorporated in, in the studio. And, you know, I'm just around, just gear. You know what I mean? And I, I like that. It gives me a sense of a warm feeling. This is like my getaway from, you know, my house. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you go into space and it's just like your sanctuary. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. sometimes I, I come down here you know, and I pull out records and I just listen to them and I'm just like, oh shit, like, just inspiring, you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, you got to have your sanctuary where it's just like you, you know, the vibes and, you know, yeah, you just, you know, get into, oh, you yeah. know, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 I hear you. Yeah. What have you got in your studio in terms of, um, like instruments um, or gear i have a moog i have uh my akai controller 49 i have uh my casio this is the shit that they uh the original casio that they did uh the sling ting rhythm on um the roland boutique uh keyboard i have uh 808 the 808 um roland boutique um drum machine i have uh the mpc one i have mm. uh the original wurlitzer mm. um i have a chord keyboard and what else my speakers my monitors and yeah my turntable setup which is my pioneer and my 1200s yeah nice yeah it's 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 like it's compact but it's compact the right way you know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah you know, where it's like, it's comfortable. It's, I can, I can turn around. I could, you know, sift the records. I can go on my keyboards and, you know, yeah, and, yeah that kind of shit, you know? So yeah. that's, it, it's, yeah, I, I, it's in my house. So I designed it like the way I want to come down in the morning and like have some tea and just like turn shit on and just like vibe out, throw a record on, get inspired by it, and, you know? You know, so yeah, that kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's that's inspiring when you have like a good environment that that makes you want to create. Mm -hmm. That's 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 so good. Like it just yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, like it's like I get in my zone where it's like sometimes it might be hard to create, but you got to create that space where it feels good. Like you know what I mean? Oh yeah. So that's that's for me. It's like. Um, having a space where it's like so nice where I can say, okay, yeah. Okay. What I can do, what can I do today? Yeah. You know? And, um, yeah, I rigged it where, you know, I have, uh, logic and I'm learning logic, like, you know, all the time now and learning how to, you know, control the stuff. So if I don't have guys over my house helping me, you know what I mean? Not guys, but one particular guy, my guy that knows how to do all of this stuff, 
I, I'm learning it on my own. So I'm getting, I'm getting really dope at it. You know what I mean? But it's always a learning curve because like I said earlier in the conversation, like it's now the new world where you have to learn digital. It's no more analog. Mm. Analog can patch into what I'm doing now, the, this, the, the digital world, mm. you know, but you got to know how to, it's like, you got to know how to do all of this shit. So it's, it's a cool, it's, it's fun because it's, you're learning it and you're understanding it, you know, and it's getting, it gets, it gets good every, day by day. It's getting better and better and better. You know what I mean? So, mm. Mm. you know, and that makes me more self-sufficient that I don't have to rely on anybody. I can do it all myself. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's, that's a good thing. You know, mm -hmm. only thing I would have to do is say, okay, whether when I play something or I do something, I could, you know, send the files to this guy, have them throw whatever on it, you know what I mean? And then send it back to me and I could pop it back into logic and pull it up. And, you know, that's the cool shit about it. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. It's totally different from like the nineties when I was, you know, <clears throat> making music it was just like oh you do everything in the sp12 and a 950 and you can there's only so much you could do but now it's like there's in the 90s there was only so much you could do but now there's so much you can do and you don't even need to go in a big studio you know what yeah I mean? yeah you gotta you just have to have the right shit you know what i mean and i mean I, i'm sure you feel good about that as a producer so that's been beneficial oh yeah this is this is like my studio right now like i feel like i'm in a candy store there's so much to learn there's so much mm -hmm. to do you mm -hmm. know what i mean so it's just like okay where where do i you know what i mean that's why i you know for me it's like now i could take my time but and and produce how i want to produce but at the same time it's overwhelming because there's so much toys and so much sounds and effects and drums that you know what i mean like from yeah. records from records to you know modules and all of this shit it's like limit you're limitless you know what yeah I mean? yeah so that's what it is you know yeah i um i'm a lover of analog i like uh i like things being kind of stable and firm yeah uh and it's a bit of a as far as djing goes like um, and here's an example of why, like I, my laptop broke down last week and oh. it just stopped working. Yeah. And, um, I had a, I had a event planned with, uh, two of my girlfriends. We were going to do uh -huh. two of us are DJs and the other one was a performer. Uh -huh. So we were going to do a live stream and I was like, I did, I wasn't even worried for a second. I had a yeah. whole set planned out on my computer. Yeah. It was gone. You know, I couldn't use Serato and I was like, yeah. Okay, I'll just DJ from vinyl. <laughs> yeah, it, but you know what? Honestly, like, I'm gonna tell you, like, I was a huge, like, I used to carry crates and DJ with crates and stuff like that, vinyl. Yeah. yeah. And then when Serato came, it was just like the greatest thing ever. Yeah. And then when I lost like over, you know, 10,000 songs on my computer, like, mm. you know, that kind of hurt me, but then it was like, okay, cool. I, I I know how to balance like Serato and real vinyl. So mm -hmm. even if I was to do a, a, a live set, like a streamer set, I'm doing a, all vinyl. I'm mm -hmm. not doing I'm not doing like Serato or anything like that. I'm just gonna, you know, rig up my Roland and then rig up my phone and then all you're gonna hear is vinyl. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I still have like a lot of the nineties vinyl and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um that I I love to play like, you know what I mean? Because I collected a lot of records from the nineties, you know, from the labels and stuff like that. So yeah, there's just, it's, it's just like, everything is like, um, like you, it's like you balance it. You know what I mean? You balance, yeah. you balance everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And like, the, if I was to play Serato, you know, on a stream, it would be like a song that's so obscure that I can't get the vinyl for that. I have to play that. I know, you know what I mean? I want to play it. Or even house music, like the soulful house music. I would play house music on Serato. Yes. But everything else, like, you know, like funk and soul and all that stuff, or, you know, 90s hip hop, I, I, I would definitely go vinyl with that. You know what mm. I mean? So, mm. you know, and, and then again, it's just, it just, I think, you know, when Serato was introduced, it was 
as a way to cheat as far as being a DJ. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you know how to play and cue up records from the original vinyl, then you're good. Yeah. You know, that's being a real DJ. So it's like, you know, you're going back to basics and basics is always good. If you know your basics, then yeah, you're real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, a lot of people are making fun of, um, you know, um, iPhone DJs and all this shit years back and all of that stuff. It's just like, that's what they know because it's technology and you can't hate people for fucking with the new technology. That's, 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 that's what it is there for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But at the same time too, no, exactly how to use a turntable not just cdjs or, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. know how to know how to use a dj uh, if your cdjs if you go in a club and they're like oh fuck um you know dj such and such the cdjs are gone but we have 212s you mm -hmm. know what i mean mm -hmm. you gotta know how to rock those 212s you know mm -hmm. what i mean and that's how i feel about djing like you gotta know the basics you know yeah i mean it's it's just like Rappers say this all the time and, and other folks in hip hop say this all the time about the music. They say, you know, you got to know the forebears, the people who created this, you know, like the African Bambada, Big Daddy Kane, Eric B and Rakim, uh, even, even, you know, even more old school than that. Like you got to know what came before you. Definitely. DJing is not an exception to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It started on, this is why I was like, Oh, where's that documentary, Matt? <laughs> yeah, because I knew yeah, I, I knew it would be about yeah. this, right? Hon honestly, like, yeah, like, it, honestly, if I I I still think it's an interesting way, and now that you know, if I could do it, you know, in the future, I, that that will be something that you know I would I would do for sure. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that would be something. Um, yeah, it would be, I just got to get the right people involved and, 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 and find the right people that, that can see that vision. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And we talked about this earlier. It's like, you got to go in and you got to convince people that this is the shit. Mm -hmm. If you could do that, then you have people on your side to say, okay, we're going to make this film mm -hmm. and this is what it's going to be. You know what I mean? So that's all it is. It's, it's just finding the time and space and putting the energy towards finding the right people to create, you know, this film you know what i mean yeah i mean i think the time is is coming if it's not already here like mm -hmm. going back to this whole like analog and digital argument mm -hmm. when i started djing like i had this internal debate as to okay i really want to like i'm going to learn how to dj with vinyl regardless because right. in my head that's the original way of djing right and you know i soon learned that it's the other thing that what I love about it is that it forces you to know music. Yeah. You know, that's why DJs make such great producers. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it forces you to know your music. Yeah. Uh, but just know how music works in general. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, again, it's just, it's um, a friend of mine had this event called Back to the Basics. And I think that's what DJing is, back to the basics. You got to know the basics before you start, you know, venturing out to like, mm -hmm. you know, so many different like technology and stuff like that. And yeah. calling, calling yourself the baddest DJ or you're the greatest DJ. You yeah. know, if you don't know how to rock 12s, then, then what's the fucking point? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. If you can't mix two songs without sync. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you, you, you can't. And, and I was like, so should I, like, I want to do that regardless, <laughs> but then... In terms of getting gigs and moving around and you know yeah. it's so easy yeah, I mean, to carry a controller versus two turntables and yeah, you know what i mean but but even but, even even when you're doing that like like you know for me it's like certain certain kind of gigs if mm -hmm. i know i want to yeah. play records or whatever i might just grab one crate of some good shit and just have my my my, my laptop and all the other shit that i'm going to play like, you know what I mean? If you want yeah. to get down to it, like you could probably start off the party with like vinyl, like, you know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. and then go into like all the, the other crazy shit that you want to do on laptop. But it's just like, it's just, all it is is preference and, and convenience right now. Like, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. I mean, and, and I was speaking to um, a DJ, uh, Pro V, shout out to Pro V. You know, he was mm -hmm. like, listen, do what you do what you want to do like do what's feels right to you uh -huh. and w what feels right to you and i was like well uh -huh. the the vinyl you know uh -huh. the vinyl shit feels right to me like i don't uh -huh. 
really, I don't really have an interest in, in purchasing a controller or learning how to use, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like, and, uh -huh. and no shade to it at all, but it just yeah. doesn't, what I like, yeah. I, I know what I like, you know? Yeah. Um, you know what? It's, it, it, it's kind of like nostalgic where, when you see oh, yeah. fucking like oh, yeah. a set of 12s and a mixer, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's so cool. You know what I mean? When you see like CDJs, it's just like, oh, uh, you know what I mean? But it kind of, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like yes, oh, for sure. For sure. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like when you, it's just like, oh, you're not a real DJ, or you're just like whatever, whatever. <laughs> but when you see somebody that has a set of twelves and a, a setup, and it's just like, all right, all right, it just yeah. feels good. It's just like that's the history. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's where shit started from. That's the yeah. real shit. Like, you know, that's yeah. the cool shit. Yeah. You know, it's just vibes. <laughs> yes, and anybody who who collects vinyl, plays vinyl, DJs with vinyl, like. <laughs> You know why you're doing it, right? It it uh, it carries a lot of meaning, uh, just in terms of sound quality, just in terms of the sound. Yeah. Like when I, you know, when I first was listening, there there have been albums that, when I first listened to them on vinyl, mm -hmm. uh, I had listened to them before digitally, like in MP3s or online or whatever. But then I listened to the vinyl, and I was like hold on a second, where did these drums come from? Or yeah. like, where did these instruments come from? I did not hear this yeah. you know, on it's, it's, the digital. Yeah, it's funny because the, when you're saying that, it's so true because the way they do um, MP3s and then when you listen to the actual vinyl, like there could be something where like the drums could be on one side and the horns could be on the other side. So it's mm. panned, right? So mm. that's, that's the greatest thing about listening to vinyl because you could hear so much other stuff yeah. and separate it you know what i mean where it's just like oh shit like you know like yeah. there's there's records that i could pull out and i could say okay cool this side will be the bass and the, the keyboards and the drums and i mean the, the bass and the keyboards and this side will be the drums and the congas and you could hear that because mm -hmm. they're all separated and that's the, the greatest thing about you know vinyl and how they did things you know when they mixed back in the days in the studios mm -hmm. it's, it's it's incredible it's just you know, you yeah. get that when you're listening to, you know, the original vinyl. You lose that when you're listening to MP3s. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. That's what it is. How long have we been talking, man? <laughs> oh, shit. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, Damn. We, yeah, we, we probably got to do a, a, a part two to this one. I'm, oh. I'm <laughs> of course man that's that's a total yeah, given yeah yeah i think the, yeah. this interview is like two parts long you know <laughs> yeah it, it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty crazy but it was vibes though you know what i mean we just vibed oh, yeah. out and that's what it was and oh, yeah, that's man. that's that's the thing like when i don't know i'm just a, when you're actually talking you're talking real shit and you're talking like you know good shit it goes on like this, you know what I mean? I'm starving though. I'm gonna eat. <laughs> yeah, man. My my siblings, I'm I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, two of my siblings have been coming down here, being like, dinner's ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I gotta go eat myself. But yeah, this is this is dope. I I definitely enjoyed like you know, you know, just nerding out with you and just talking about a lot of stuff. So we definitely gotta um definitely do a a part three four. You know yeah, man. I mean? so, this is yeah. actually three parts long right here. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for all your time, man. Oh, not a problem. Building with me. This was really, really amazing for me. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Nice. Likewise. 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 Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad right. to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, for uh, sure. Yeah. And let's, let's stay in touch. Yes, please. You know? Yes. We, you know how to, I'm going to, I'm going to DM you all my information as well too. So you have it, you can Perfect. store it on your phone. You know what I mean? Perfect. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. This pandemic thing is done. Let's yeah. We'll definitely nerd out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. All that good shit. So yes. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll hit you up if I'm ever, when I come to Toronto next, I'm sure it'll be soon. Yeah. Right? For sure. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you all so right, much cool. again, man. All right. It was Peace awesome. Yes. yes. You too. Enjoy all your dinner. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell mine, man. It smells good. <laughs> really? Gosh. Yes, yes. What are you guys eating? From what I can smell, uh -huh. it's it's. I think it's our, our traditional Afghan food. It smells a little bit Indian. We're not uh -huh. Indian. My mom doesn't make Indian food, but uh -huh. uh, it smells kind of Afghan. Oh, I love Afghan food. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah man. It's good. That Afghan food and um, Ethiopian food. 
Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh God. Oh, I bet there's some really good spots out there too. Oh yeah, there's there's a few places. There's a few places out here. Yeah, right. for some um, authentic stuff. So yeah. Hey. Okay. Okay. I gotta go. All right. Okay. See you Hi, later. Babe. All right. Cool. My Bye. daughter just my daughter just walked in the door. All okay. Right, cool. Yeah, we got the same thing going on. <laughs> there you go. All right. See you later. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.